All right, hello world. This is CS50 Live. My name is, I'm still in the habit of saying this is CS50 on Twitch, but my name is Colton Ogden. Um, in case anybody is brand new to this sort of ecosystem, CS50 is Harvard's sort of introductory computer science course. And uh, we now have a, a presence on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook doing a live stream where we do um, sort of from scratch implementations of projects. We cover, well, yesterday we covered Kali Linux, which was sort of a completely different thing altogether where we kind of go into hacking and cybersecurity. Um, but today we're going to go more into the former category of projects. And actually, today is very experimental. Um, so today's stream is focused around a text adventure in Python. Um, normally, I code in Lua and Love2D making games. And this is a game. Um, but we're going to do it in Python, because I think more people are actually familiar with Python. More people might be interested in Python. Um, it's a nice, easy way to do a command line focused version of a game, especially for folks that are sort of newer to programming and to Python, more generally speaking. Um, and I want to shout out Asli T, who's in the chat today, for actually bringing this idea sort of to my attention. In the past, she and I talked about a text adventure that she was sort of working on and um, creating. And I think she actually has a text adventure that she created herself. And she may be plugging that in the chat at some point. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but today's stream is very experimental in that we are actually going to do everything based on what the chat has to say. So this text adventure, I'm not going to write any of this. Um, and I'm hoping that the folks in the chat are participatory enough so that we have a corpus of potential avenues to explore today during the stream. Um, but we're going to essentially make sort of what you might have seen in a choose your own adventure style game, um, or even the old books, the choose your own adventure book. I'm going to pull up, um, I'm going to switch to my screen here. And I'm going to pull up a Google image. And I'm going to see if they have the choose your own adventure book um, sort of pictures. Yeah, these. These sort of um, like 70s, 80s, Isaac Asimov style um, like stylized books. These were cool because you would read these and you would actually say, you know, if you want to perform this action, go to page like 87. And it was kind of like this, um, I don't know what the word is offhand, but it, not asynchronous, but it was sort of not sequential, nonlinear. That, that's the word I was looking for. It was a nonlinear way of reading a book and actually sort of diving into the narrative and having an effect on how it transpired ultimately. Um, it's very interesting. I used to read these as a kid, and I think these are kind of the, I'm not actually sure if these came before the first sort of text adventures, like, um, what is it called, Zork? Is that the name of the, um, the game series? Yeah, so Zork is another really famous game series, and I, I actually think I own these games, but I haven't played them. I have an astounding number of games that I haven't played. But these are text adventure games that you'd play at your command line or whatever. And I think some of them had a graphical interface. And you would choose sort of how you want to actually play out the game. And if you made the right choices, you would eventually win and beat the game. And if you made a wrong choice, um, you would probably die in some gruesome fashion. And actually, Bandersnatch came out fairly recently on Netflix. And this was a um, Black Mirror episode that was a very similar style um, sort of choose your own adventure piece of fiction, only this was implemented in a brand new format sort of through Netflix through um, streaming video, where using, you know, if you're using an Apple TV or using your TV, your smart TV's remote, you could actually navigate through Netflix um, the different options in the narrative to change the flow of the story. And this, like choose your own adventure games and like choose your own adventure books, had sort of the effect of potentially leading you down gruesome and un sort of savory paths. Um, but this is cool. This is going to be an interesting, I think, way for us to take this format and actually apply it to, I guess, Twitch and make it a community-driven thing. So we'll see how it works out. Um, and Asley plugged her thing there in the chat. And uh, Noel Izo, is this being recorded? Yes, it is being recorded. This will be on YouTube after the fact. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, you will not have taken part in the creation of this. And if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, um, I would recommend going to Twitch, at least for today's episode, because the latency on Twitch is less than Facebook and YouTube. And I will ideally like to be able to read people's responses so that we can keep the flow going. So definitely tune on to Twitch, twitch.tv slash cs50tv if you want to uh, suggest options for today's chat. Uh, East London has some suggestions that I'm probably not going to plug in because I do not know what that means. Um, he says, Google something to show good pictures. Very good interactive fiction in Russian. Uh, I'm going to have to take your word on that, East London. That sounds like it could be a slippery slope. And is Mizengen, how long will it be? This will be about three hours. So usually my streams are about three hours long. We may cut it a little bit shorter. Um, it, like uh, Whipstreak said, 90 minutes is kind of the lower bound, three hours being the upper bound. 
Um, but we'll see how we'll see how things go. And I have actually no sort of preconceptions as to how the stream should go. Um, other that, other than that, it'll be a interactive text adventure in Python, and uh, that you guys will be sort of leading the way. So I have a Visual Studio Code project already up and running. Uh, it's just called text adventure in my streams folder. I'm going to create a, a um, file called main.py, and this will probably honestly be all that we need for today because we're not going to super crazily engineer a project. It's just going to be basically one file with a bunch of like textual options, and we'll have some conditional logic in there. Um, depending on how fancy we get with it, depending on how people, what people want to do, we might end up tweaking things a little bit, but we'll see how things go. So I'm going to create a main.py, and then Python extension is recommended for this file type. It is OK. I will disable that for now. And uh, I'm just going to say if name is equal to main, and then we'll just say main. We'll just have a function called main def main, whose goal in life is to print hello Twitch, or well, hello CS50 Live. We are not streaming exclusively to Twitch. We are, we are streaming to a bunch of services. And I'm going to open up my command prompt. I'm going to actually, where am I right now? I'm in my home directory. I'm going to go into dev, streams, and then text adventure, I think. And then if I go Python 3 uh, main.py, this will indeed output hello CS50 Live. So not a terribly interesting um, adventure so far. But I think the first thing that we should do is we should decide on the title of the game. Um, I think this will be a nice way for us to get some inspiration. And so I'm going to choose people in the chat to give me one word at a time. This will be interesting. Uh, sort of like the choose a sentence in pieces. We're going to start with choose the title in pieces. So since Asley is the sort of um, star of the show today because she recommended what we do, Asley, I want you to recommend the first word of the title of this text adventure. And hopefully there's not enough latency to where this gets to be a little bit sluggish. But um, we'll see. And then, uh, oh, Indra Reddy, good, good to see you. Uh, as he's saying, um, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Aliens, OK, aliens. Aliens is the, the title of this text adventure. So I'm just going to create a constant up here. And the, the first word is aliens. OK, second word, whip streak. Nate, let's, uh, what's the second word of the, of the title? I have honestly no idea where this is going to go. Uh, let's also keep it PG, preferably. Um, so we will not be accepting profanity as part of the stream. Um, but, you know. I'm excited. I'm anxious to see where this leads us, because this could be very fascinating. And it'll probably be very nonsensical, ultimately, the adventure. But that's just kind of part of the fun. Um, uh, <laughs> Virani says, whoa, that's cool. Aliens, nice. Alejo Galma. Indra, ready. Indra, it's not your turn yet. But I will, I'm, you're, you're coming soon. And is Misengen. I'm going to keep track of all the folks that are in the chat. And I will ask all of you eventually to contribute to this. But just so that there's not a bombardment of uh, things at once and so that I don't have to make choices, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to narrow it. Intergalactic adventure. OK, aliens, intergalactic adventure. OK, so that's two words, though, Nate. To be fair, that's two words. We're going to have to stick to just one word. So I need you to, I need you to sort of focus down. What's one word that you want to use? Could be intergalactic. Pyros 2002, aliens and pogo sticks. Misspelling. Is that the word? Is misspelling the word? That's an interesting word. No Trinzer says, yo, I'm new here. Nice to meet you all. Hello, No Trinzer. Good to see you. Um, Bavik, welcome to the stream. We're doing a text adventure live, and everybody is contributing to the text adventure. So currently, it's on Nate to decide what the second word of the title is. Um, so Whipstreak. So Nate, what's, the, what's word two? What's the word following aliens here in our title? Intergalactic. OK, perfect. Intergalactic. And then um, Indra Reddy, I want you to give me the third word of this title. And um, maybe, that'll, maybe that'll be enough. Maybe this, this is the end of the title. Aliens Endgame, Don Don Yellow. And Bavik, you're, not, you're, you're coming soon. Don't worry. Since you're such a regular, we're going to get you involved in this ASAP. But everybody's gonna, everybody in the chat, I'm going to try to get everybody involved. Just make sure that you, if you're in the chat and you haven't said anything yet, uh, say something so I know that you're actually present so I can call on you. 
Um, but Indra ready. We're waiting, on, we're waiting on Indra for the third word of her title. We'll see how this goes. Marvel. Aliens Intergalactic Marvel. OK. That's interesting. Let's, well, that'll be the title, that'll be the title of, our, uh, of, our, of our text adventure. So of course, what we need to do in main is we need to print our title, right? And so if you're brand new to Python, uh, I'll try and explain. No Trinzer, my name is Mike. Hello, Mike. Good to see you. Um, if you're brand new to Python, I'll try to kind of keep it slow. So this is a function, main. It basically lets us say, do something. When I call this function here, when I say main parentheses, that means actually execute main, actually do what's inside of it. So I define a function called main. And inside of that, I'm just saying print title. And title, all we've said is at the very top, is a string. That's what these apostrophes sort of designate, some text. And it just says aliens intergalactic marvel. Right? So that's, that's all we've done so far. We're literally just printing a string that says aliens intergalactic marvel. So if I go back here and I print that, then we get Print it to the screen, Aliens Intergalactic Marvel. Varani says, I used to be regular, but the schedule is so uncomfortable for me. It feels bad, man. Oof, yeah, I'm sorry if, uh, if it's a little bit later in the day or if, uh, maybe it's during a work period. Indrady, I'm too bad at choosing words. That's OK. That's OK. And is Mizengen. Um, so of course, we have the title. We're going to need like a little short introduction. Um, so let's, let's maybe have a, like a few sentences of an introduction. So the first sentence. Um, Bavik, I want you to give us the first sentence of this text adventure. Um, so we'll, we'll have this sort of be introduction, intro, we'll call it intro. And uh, we're going to make it a triple, a triple quoted string. And what this lets us do is this actually lets us format the string however we want to, um, including new lines. So this is kind of a nice feature of Python. So Bavik, we're waiting on you for the, give us the first sentence of the introduction. We want it to be as uh, epic as possible. And then um, we're going to call on someone else for the second sentence, but I'll, I'll wait to, until we get the first sentence from Bavik before we decide to do that. Uh, so, so far, it seems like this is going in the realm of sci-fi a little bit, kind of epic sci-fi. So I'm not entirely sure. These Earthlings are not using their full potential. I love it. These Earthlings <laughs> are not using their full potential. Varani, I want you to give us the second sentence. Can you do that for me? Varani, second sentence number two in our intro here. These earthlings are not using their full potential. I love it. I love it as a first, that's a great first sentence. Oh, way past midnight, says Varani. Oof, I'm sorry. You know, we're, what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to bring the stream back to an earlier schedule. That's why today we're actually streaming at noon Eastern time, because normally we stream at 1 Eastern time, and that's typically too late for a lot of people. Um, but 12 is a little bit earlier, so hopefully we can sort of accommodate some folks. Shinwen Chong says, hello, everyone. Hello, Shinwen. Good to see you. Can I do this through spider? And is Mizengen? I'm not sure what spider is. I apologize. Um, and and is Mizengen, I'm going to call on you soon, because you've been, you've been active in the chat. Um, I've just started with CSV. Glad I've caught this. How long do you normally stream for? Says Beer Hunter. Um, we usually stream for about an hour and a half to three hours. So we'll see how long today's goes. It's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. We're going to we're going to see how. I have honestly no idea what to expect today. Oh, Anaconda. Okay, probably unnecessary, honestly, to use an IDE for today. This is more of like a back and forth with the chat. And we're just going to be using VS Code. You, pr I mean, you probably. Oh, if you're talking about on your own, yeah, you could use. I'm sure you could use Spider for almost anything Python related. All we're doing today is just strings, basically. Strings, conditional logic, we might get into inventory. Um, depends on how complicated the text adventure gets and how much we can get done in three hours. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what we're going for. And so I asked, I think I asked Varani. So Varani, we're waiting on you for the, uh, for the second sentence of the, um, of the intro here. So let's, uh, if, you're, if you're listening in, we need you. We need you. So we'll see us. Glad you are back. Oh, Cyril, good to see you. It's been a while. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I honestly don't associate Anaconda with much more than like Matplotlib and like scikit-learn stuff, like machine learning stuff. But then again, I don't do a ton of that in, uh, in Python. Um, Dr. Robotvinik, will you do any more JS intro sessions? Um, probably. Probably. What I want to do personally is get more into React projects and build up some like React projects on stream from scratch. 
Um, I think that would be interesting. They're eating peanut butter, but it is the most precious resource in the universe since it allows for intergalactic travel. Okay, okay. They are eating <laughs> peanut butter, but it is the most... <laughs> I love how PG, I love just how PG this explicitly is today. It is the most precious resource uh, in the universe um, since it allows for intergalactic travel. And then we're going to get one more. We're going to get one more sentence, maybe two more sentences. Um, so the next person I want to ask is Enes Mizengen. Can I get you, since you've been proactive in the chat today, can I get you to give me the third sentence for this intro? Um, Dr. Robotvinik, yeah, me too. I think JavaScript stuff and React stuff would be a lot. Um, Verani, I appreciate I think the absurdity is fantastic. Let's keep the absurdity going so that we can. <laughs> I think that's ultimately the point of this experiment, is just see how crazy we can get. Uh, Zanzamin says cool stuff. X Nilo, I'm here to contribute. Perfect. I will call on you, X Nilo, um, very shortly. I want to thank all of the. Um, all of the uh, folks that have followed, actually, in the last few minutes here. We have Zero Cool, Enes Mizengen, uh, PowerHit666, X Nilo, Alfred Montbank, uh, Ashish Gupta, and Bonking Elephant. Thank you all very much for the follows. I appreciate it. Enes Mizengen, can someone else give me a sentence? I'm looking for my charger. Uh, we'll, call, we'll call back on you, Enes Mizengen. X Nilo, since you said you're here to contribute, let's get you to get a third sentence here in the chat, in the, in the intro here. I like how you can keep up with various conversations at the same time. We got to keep we got to keep the the flow going, you know. And I'm actually super stoked that like so many people are here chatting and making this uh, making this a thing. Because if this was like one person, I think it would get a little bit dry, um, or at least if if not dry, very consistent. Because we would have a consistent narrative. So one person wouldn't be bad. But I think having a lot of people lets us bring a variety to the table here and make things interesting. So X Nilo, we're gonna get X Nilo for the third sentence. Um, for our intro, and then we can start talking about um, actually creating the text adventure, getting um, logic, getting some like sort of if then if statements in here. Uh, if folks are brand new to Python, this will be maybe in interesting or educational. If folks already know Python, this might be a little bit simplistic. Um, but you know, the goal is more to have fun today and do a little bit of Python, not more to uh, not as much to be super crazy with the engineering side of things. Um, Franny says, got latency fixed. 30 seconds of delay, that's terrible. I would, I, that would be rough for today's stream, especially if we call on you. So now I know if I call on you and then there's a lot of latency, at least I know what's going on. I know you're not ignoring me. If our race is to survive, we must obtain as much of it as possible. So, so what we're saying then is that this, uh, this whole thing is from the perspective of the aliens, which is interesting. Okay, okay, we can do that. So if our race is to survive, we must obtain as much of it as possible. Cue the text adventure. So this is a villainous text adventure game. So this isn't from the perspective of humans. This is from the perspective of the aliens. I'm curious how we're going to actually get all that peanut butter. Um, so the next thing that I want to do, after I've printed the title, then I want to probably print the intro. So once I do that, we can see that Aliens intergalactic marvel. These earthlings are not using their full potential. They are eating peanut butter, but is the most precious resource in the universe since it allows for intergalactic travel. If our race is to survive, we must obtain as much of it as possible. So this is the part where we decide how we actually begin the text adventure. So usually in text adventures, it's presented in second person. It's, it's um, It'll usually present you a dialogue like, your name is blah, blah, blah. You are something. You are somewhere doing something. Um, what would you like to do? Or give you some options. You, know? um, you, have, you have several options in front of you. What do you choose to do? Right? Um, so why don't we get a prompt like that, a second person prompt for our text adventure? I feel like that would make things a little bit more, um, I guess, orthodox in this context. Um, Ashish Gupta, aliens ask their own alien Spocky to beam them down to Earth and fix this issue humans reject. <laughs> oh, their own human Spock, right. All right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. This is my first class as Taman Farduzi. Yeah, this is going to be uh, an interesting first class for you. 
uh, some deep dream story, says the sandwich. Actually, this does kind of feel like a deep dream, uh, deep dream story. We should choose a name for the alien. Oh, right. We're, uh, we should probably, yeah, let's choose a name for the alien. And I, this is something that Day9 likes to do a lot. Um, Day9 is a YouTuber and a streamer that will do something similar to this when he chooses names for his um, sort of characters that he plays. So we're going to create a, a variable called hero and one letter at a time. I'm going to get one letter at a time from people. I'm going to call on you one at a time. Um, since Sophalion is brand new to the chat, Sophalion, I want you to give me the first letter of the, uh, the hero. First letter of the hero's name. And let's consider that this is going to be an alien's name, and that probably doesn't matter. This will probably be a crazy name either way. Um, but we'll get Sophalion, who's just now in the chat, to give us the first letter of the name. Um, I don't know if this is too advanced for this start, but why don't we have user input to allow for a more personalized story? Um, we could do that. We could say, um, you know, input, what is your name? We are going to do a more personalized story in the sense that we're going to start choosing options in a little bit, but we have to sort of set the stage for the story before we do that. Um, and I think it's more interesting also for the chat to choose the hero's name than it is for me to create a name. But Z is a perfect first letter. Um, and actually, let's decide how many letters the name is going to be. I'm, I'm going to go to random.org. And then I'm going to say the, the name is going to be between, we're going to choose one number. Um, that's going to be between five. We'll say it's between five and 10 characters. It's going to be six characters long. Six character long name. So let's go back to here. So Z. So Fallon kindly gave us <laughs> the letter Z. Um, Beer Hunter, why don't you give us the second letter of the, um, of the hero's name? Since Beer Hunter has been also very active in the chat <laughs> and as Menzingen also said Z. Um, people are having some latency issues as well. If folks are, definitely refresh the stream because, uh, yeah, I, it would be painful. I can imagine the pain on your end trying to, get, um, trying to get through with 30 seconds of latency. So Beer Hunter said Y. So Z, Y are the first two letters of our six character name. Um, let's see, who, who else has been in the chat? Alejo, let's, uh, let's get you involved. Alejo Galma, give us the third letter of the alien's name. It'll be kind of awkward if I choose somebody's name who's left the chat because, <laughs> because we'll be asking them for a letter and they just won't be providing it. Um, no trends or we'll get you involved here. But uh, Alejo, if we could get a letter from you for the, for the aliens, the third letter of the alien's name. Let's see if I'm missing. Did I miss any anything in the chat? I don't think I did. Aliens are nice. They don't have to be villains. That's a good point. And this is a fairly, a fairly innocent story. Uh, do you do this kind of stream a lot? I only saw it on Watch People Code. Um, we do actually, X Nyla. We stream every week about two to three times, and we're trying to we're trying to publish more stuff. Um, sort of out to different subreddits and other platforms. So I'm happy that you actually saw it in the. Uh, in the Reddit there. So thanks for tuning in. Alejo said W. So this is a just a crazy sort of end of the alphabet name so far. Um, but no Trinzer. I'm going to ask you if you want to double down on G or if you want to choose another letter. Binary Warrior 76, good to see you. Um, way in Japan. Um, power hit 666. Oh, I, I see. OK, interesting. Um, that would be my first and last course at the same time. Sad, it's late for me here. Oof, yeah, I do know that in Japan right now, it is way late. It's like super far across the world. <laughs> so I, I don't blame you at all for not being able to tune in more. Um, but thank you for tuning in today. Hopefully, I will get you involved. Um, so maybe for the next letter. No, tr no Trinzer is doubling down on G. So we're saying Zaug, Zaug is the <laughs> current name of the character. Um, Stay peaceful, 89. Hello, good to see you. And I'm glad, X Nilo, that you're enjoying the concept. Way in Japan, um, let's get you. Oh, VD Hug, we will get, we'll get you next, VD Hug. We'll get you next. Um, Henox says, I'm new to the stream. I love coding and I appreciate it. Awesome. Glad that you're joining us today. Um, I'll keep studying your GD50, not on Super 50 Bros. Oh, now on Super 50 Bros. Awesome. That's, that's super cool. Thanks for, uh, for taking the course and keeping, um, keeping up with it. Let's get you, way in Japan, let's get you to, uh, to give me the fifth letter of this, of this name. And then we'll get VD Hug to get the sixth letter. Um, but VD Hug, let's wait until, uh, let's wait until way in Japan gives us, his, gives us the name. Please let it finish with an H. 
<laughs> Zao. Zao. BRB, don't call on me. Oh, Wayne Japan says E. Zaugi. And then lastly, VD hug. Let's get the let's get the last letter. And um, let's see who else. Who else do we need? We need to get um, Henok T9 involved, actually, ASAP. Which topics are you targeting as part of CS50 Live? Um, pretty much all over the place. Oh, Bella and Martin, right, of course. Um, we'll call on them ASAP. So VD Hug says H. So Zau Z Zauge. Zauge. <laughs> That's the name of our alien. Zauge. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and um, let's write. This is starting to get a way sort of. Uh, this will get really bulky, and that's sort of how the nature of um, text adventures goes, is things are going to start to accumulate a bit. But um, let's, we're going to need to use this name now in, a, in sort of a, a second-person prompt. We need to say, oh, you are blah, 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 you know, the, set the scene, so to speak. So uh, let's, get, um, let's get Bella Cures. Bella, if you're in the chat, I want to get Bella to give us the first... Um, sort of prompt here, telling us, setting the scene for how our adventure is going to begin, right? We need, we need to set the stage. We need, to, we need to say who the hero is, where they are, what they're doing, what the goal is, and where are we supposed to go. So the first, the first sentence of the prompt, Bella, if you, if you could kindly indulge us in the first prompt, first sentence, and then we'll take it from there. And then uh, I need to, there are so many people being so, um, uh, proactive in the chat today, which is amazing. It's gonna. It's kind of hard to keep up with all the names right now. But um, too cold for me. Says way in Japan. Oh, in reference to uh, Verani. I guess they're talking about. Oh, Siberia. Verani's in Siberia. Oof. That is. Yeah. That's. That's not a uh, very warm part of the of the world. Especially, I think now. I'm, I'm guessing right now it's extremely cold. This is this MC gonna be badass. A Eastern European alien <laughs> sounds legit. <laughs> oh man, Kanaj, hell, I call Mike your streams. Get to learn a lot. Awesome, thanks so much, Kanaj. We'll get you involved today, hopefully. Um, Bella, if you're in the chat, um, maybe Bella isn't in the chat. Uh, it's been a while since we've heard from Bella, but if if Bella, you're in the chat, we would love to get a first sentence from you. I know it's also a lot of pressure, so it's kind of tough. I think on the fly to sort of come up with something. Virander says, try living in Scotland. Oof. I actually don't know that much about the weather in Scotland. I would imagine Europe or Western Europe, generally speaking, um, sort of the UK area is pretty chilly this time of year. Um, all I know about England uh, is that, or at least UK, is that it's extremely, um, extremely rainy and gray. Snow just melted. All awesome. Nice. If, uh, if Bella is not in the chat, we may have to come back to Bella in the future. I know Bella is always here, so she, she may have stepped away. She may be here. <laughs> Bella says, in Spain, it is really warm. It is not warm in, actually, in Boston right now, it's pretty warm. So that we're, we're in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is where Harvard University is located. Uh -huh. All things considered, it's actually pretty warm today. It's in the 40s. It's been colder than that earlier. Uh, re actually, it was in the 60s like three days ago, it was pretty nice. And then it was in the 20s and like 10s for a while, and that was really brutal. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't think it really holds a candle to Europe. I think Europe tends to get really brutally cold at this time of year, so I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, I will, I'll smile and enjoy the weather that we have here on the east coast of the United States. Um, never trust British weather. Let's get, um, so Bella, we might, we might come back to Bella. Let's get, um, who, who haven't we called on that's been active in the chat so far? Um, Binary Warrior 76, we haven't called on you. You've been, you've been here um, in the chat. So let's get, a, let's get a sentence, the first sentence prompt of our text adventure, setting the scene. Let's get that from Binary Warrior 76. What is going to be the, this, the beginning of our adventure? Snark cheese. Oh, seven degrees Celsius in, uh, well, I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing Celsius in uh, Northwest England. I don't think someone from England would use the, would use the uh, imperial system. Uh, you could probably write a script that collects people's names and do an updating list that shows all the names that have been active in the chat. That's probably true. That is probably true. 
Oh, he was talking in Fahrenheit. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Veronica going to go AFK? Don't call me, please. I appreciate it. I appreciate the folks that are letting me know that they're going AFK, so I don't call on somebody and, uh, and sort of assume that they're there, because, um, yeah. It's hard to tell, necessarily, because people are so active, but you might, somebody, might, somebody might step away on it at moments notice. Things come up. Reality has a lot of things that introduce complications to these sorts of things, you know? Somebody might get a phone call or food might get delivered. You are an alien from a galaxy far, far away. I love it. You are an alien from a galaxy far, far away. And your name is Zauge from, um, from uh, I don't know, what would that be from? I guess uh, from Croatia or, some, or something. Insert Eastern European country. Um, Alien being alien to himself, said Varani. Yeah, that's true. Binary Warrior 76 or just responded. I'll have to leave now. Thanks for letting me choose a letter, Colton. My pleasure, Way in Japan. Thanks so much for contributing. Uh, let's get, let's get, have a nice day. You as well. Let's see, who haven't we gotten a letter from? Snark Cheese. Snark Cheese, I haven't seen you give us anything yet. Let's get something from, uh, from Snark Cheese. Let's get the second sentence of our prompt. We need a little bit more information. We're an alien from a galaxy far, far away, but what are we doing? What are, what's our goal? What's our plan? Obviously, we want to get peanut butter from Earth, right? We want to prevent the Earthlings from eating all the peanut butter. It's, the, <laughs> it's a precious resource for intergalactic travel. Why we can't grow our own peanuts and make peanut butter, that's too, too, it's too complicated to, to know at this point in time. All we know is that we need to get the peanut butter that exists on Earth, right? That's, that's the plan. Um, so Snark Cheese, what's the second sentence in this prompt to set the scene? What are we doing? You explore new worlds to find a new home for your species, Adiusa. I will call, Adiusa, I'm going to get you soon. Don't worry. A monumental task has been laid ahead of you by high command. OK. A monumental task has been laid ahead of you by high command. OK, it's sounding pretty epic, sounding pretty epic. Adiusa, what is the next sentence? Following Snark Cheese's awesome sentence, a monumental task has been laid ahead of you by high command. We need a concrete goal, though. We need to be able to start making choices. This is a choose-your-own-adventure. This is a text adventure game. So we're going to need to be able to say, you know, I don't know if we want to do this in, like, a, you have three options in front of you. But really, I mean, this, is, this really depends on how f people decide to word their sentences, right? This is, this is how it's going to set the pace for the adventure. Um, but Adiusa, we're going to get the next sentence from you. So go ahead and contribute that. Previously, you said you explore new worlds to find a new home for your species. But we're going to, uh, I'll ask you to confirm if you want to maybe reword that or use that or choose a new sentence, given what Snark Cheese said. Our weather doesn't let us cultivate peanuts, obviously, says Asley T. There we go. That's great. a great amount of uh, sort of ex <laughs> exposition. It explains the situation at hand. Analyze Earth's climate and grow our own on our planet. I guess we could terraform a pla the planet, um, you know, develop an atmosphere capable of growing peanuts and then therefore manufacturing peanut butter. It, this is all hopefully within the realm of possibilities for, a, um, for a, a, an alien species with sort of intergalactic travel. From your mission depends the future of our planet. Uh, OK, so from your mission depends the future of our planet. Awesome. You are to infiltrate the Earthlings, live amongst them, become one of them, and learn the way of the peanut butter. E excellent, excellent. I think that's a that's a great sort of way of framing the uh, framing the adventure. So, let's see who has who's been in the chat who I haven't called on. So, no trinser. I think I called on no trinser. I'd use a beer hunter. SHM746, hello world, awesome. So right on time, SHM746. Um, we are making a text adventure. And at what you see on the screen is essentially the text adventure. Um, but what, what we need now is we need a, a, a prompt to basically tell us what we're doing right now at this moment in time. And we need to start making choices. We need to start actually driving the text adventure. So we, right now, we've had a lot of exposition. But we need to basically have something along the lines of, you are at so-and-so place, and you have to do so-and-so. Like, you have three choices in front of you, right? And then once we get to that point, we can actually start asking for input and getting the user to choose which choice they want to decide on. And then we can have sort of branching paths. And then this, that'll be um, pretty interesting. So SHM746, 
Give us the next sentence in our prompt. What are we, and I'll, I'll move this over just a touch so that we, we can see it uh, with the chat there in the overlay. What, what is the next, what, what is going to lay the groundwork for our next sort of piece of this text adventure? And uh, Grim Waltzman, hello there. Good for, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, so SHM 746, it's on you now. Everything is on your shoulders. Where are we? What are we doing? How do we get this adventure kicked off? Hello World is so ironic right now, says Asley. A little bit. It's a, like, actually, hello, Earth, sort of. <laughs> As an alien infiltrator. Reminds me of the old adventure books where you turn to a page depending on your choices. Exactly. Yeah, we talked about that, actually, uh, early in the stream. This is the, um, this is the um, sort of choose-your-own-adventure-style book in Twitch form. And Binary Warrior, yes, this will get cluttered fast. Wouldn't it be better to put our prompts in another file and import them from there? Absolutely would. Um, and once we get a little bit larger, I think we will actually probably start doing that. Curiou says, hi, Colton. Hello, Curiou. Thanks for joining. Still waiting on SHM746 for the next part of the prompt. Um, if maybe they stepped, uh, they said that they joined the chat and that it looks exciting. But if they might have stepped away, we may ask I might get Jabon3 involved, or Grim Waltzman, actually, since they both just joined the chat. Um, but I'll wait just a second more. Maybe they went to eat peanut butter. That's true. It is, this is the kind of text adventure that's going to make you want to make a peanut butter sandwich, because there's so many mentions of peanut butter. Um, can I get a pass? Yes, absolutely. You can get a pass. Um, let me know if you want to get a, uh, involved a little bit later, SHM746. Grim Waltzman, let's get you involved. I want you to fill in the end of this prompt. I want you to say, uh, sort of, how we can get in, uh, how we can set the stage for taking the adventure to a, a position where we can actually start making choices. I want, I want us to be able to say something along the lines of um, you something more concrete and uh, sort of right in front of you. Like you are currently at blah 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 doing blah 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 blah. Um, you can do one of three things, or maybe something like that, just so that we can at least lay a framework for ourselves. And if folks have other ideas, definitely put them in the chat. Um, destroy the peanut butter monster. I didn't know there was a peanut butter monster, but if we can write a peanut butter monster into the story, that's the power of the chat. But we'll say, we'll ask the Grim Waltzman here to um, sort of put us down on firm ground to actually get us into a. Uh, in a position to make some choices. The sandwich says Hollywood is turning this into a movie. The first choice could be the way you infiltrate the Earth. Ah, yes, of course, says VD Hug. That, that, that's actually quite excellent. We could do something like that. Um, yeah, why don't we do that, actually? If, if, unless Grim Waltzman has a, a different suggestion, we will use that as the beginning of our text adventure just so that we can at least get to a point where we can start making choices. I feel like you should be the CEO of a big peanut butter company. Uh, as the second in command of Alien Survival Force, you have to implement three tasks, says Bunny on the Run. Ooh, OK, that's interesting. Um, OK, so that's, both of those are good ideas. So let's, let's say that. So Grim Waltzman hasn't responded. So Grim Waltzman, if you have ideas, definitely contribute. We'll say, we'll take VD Hug's example. Oh, Grim Waltzman, I'm not ready yet. That's OK. Um, We'll say, let's see, where was it? It was here. First choice could be a way you infiltrate the Earth. Right, OK. So there are three tasks that we can implement. This is Bunny on the Run. So we'll do that as part of the narrative. There's Bella Cares. You are sent to carry out a secret operation to steal peanut butter from the Earth. So we'll use that. We'll use that. You are sent to carry out a secret operation to steal peanut butter from, from the Earth. And then VD Hug's comment was fantastic. So the way you infiltrate the Earth. So we'll say we'll say something like, "How will you first infiltrate planet Earth?" Right. So now we have like the ability to start prompting for input. So this is where it's going to start getting entertaining. So I want uh, we'll say at least three choices, but we'll we'll let um, since Bunny on the run. And Grim Waltzman, feel free to contribute here. Since Bunny on the Run contributed the second in command of Alien Survival Force 3 tasks comment, I want Bunny to, to suggest one option. Userman2, hello, good to see you. Um, Asley2 said, good thinking. Uh, yep, 
Fantastic. So, uh, Bunny on the Run, I want a task from you. And who haven't I called on who's been in the chat? I apologize. Kira Yu. Kira Yu, I don't think I called on you. So, Kira Yu, if you have an idea, contribute uh, one option. So, it's going to look something like this. So, we'll say um, first prompt options. It's going to be equal to one. And this will be, um, you know, option A, two, option B, and three, option C, right? So here we can say print. Uh, well, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to say, no, we're actually, no, 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 this, this is good. We're going to say print first prompt. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say um, infiltrate option is equal to input on first prompt options. And what this is going to end up doing is it's going to display the title, the intro, the first prompt, and then it's going to display the three options that we're going to choose here in just a second. But it's going to assign whatever, we, whatever value we choose, one, two, or three, back into infiltrate option. And we can probably turn this into an int and maybe use that in a sort of a list of options. But we'll worry about that in just a second. But let's, for now, make sure that this is running appropriately. So we have all of our stuff so far. So aliens, intergalactic, marvel. These earthlings are not using their full potential, et cetera, et cetera. You're an alien from a galaxy far, far away. How will you first infiltrate planet Earth? Notice that we have three options, A, B, and C, which we haven't decided on yet. But I can say one, enter, and then the program exits because we've gotten the result, and that's the end of our script. So let me go ahead and read the chat. Let's make sure that we're keeping up with all the options here. I feel like you should be the CEO. OK, we already read that. Right, right, right. Um, Become an undercover Earthling has got to be one. That will be an interesting choice, having to not get caught. I have to not, fi I have to n not figure now what's going on. One option should be disguise as a wavy arm tube man, says user man two. OK, that's, that's an interesting series of choices. So the first one was somebody said, become an undercover Earthling. So that's option one. So that's more of like the, I think more of like the, like what you would expect, sort of like Men in Black style, like disguise as a, a, you know, as an alien, disguise yourself as a human, and then try to get wherever you're trying to go on Earth. Peanut butter option. Um, give Earthlings the superpower of telepathy, and they will misuse it by reading other minds and start a civil war against each other, and we can save our resources before infiltration. That sounds like a lot, Bavik. Uh, let's let's maybe keep the, let's maybe keep the stuff down a little bit, just so that we can have a more granular uh, ev uh, evolutionary sort of sequence of steps. Although I like where your head's at, I think that's a very creative way of um, sort of leading the narrative a little bit. We could make absolutely give humans telepathy, and then um, and then sort of write out that story with other other folks' input. Maybe I think that could be very interesting. The font color choice is on point. Oh, oh you mean for the, uh, for the um, uh, text editor or for the prompt for the terminal? The very matrixy style. Um, become a peanut butter jar. That is fascinating. Become a peanut butter jar. We'll make that option uh, become a peanut butter jar. And we won't limit ourselves to three options. We'll, we'll, we'll have a few options here. So we'll say give humans the power of telepathy in the hopes they uh, engage in warfare, in civil war. We'll say that in civil war. And then uh, pretend to be a snake charmer, but your snake can read human minds to get information. <laughs> oh, man. OK. Well, we'll, um, well, well, let's make that maybe part of the first thread here, becoming an undercover earthling. So we'll uh, user man 2, we'll, we'll, we'll introduce that as part of the uh, option one, right? And Hi, I'm Manuel from Nigeria. Hello, Manuel. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, invasion. Invasion. Okay, attack them, Alejo. So this is, of course, another option. So attack the hum. Attach. Attack the humans, right? So we have four options so far. The peanut butter jar could be a random movement where the humans take you places, hoping to land in the right place. Oh, interesting. I like that. I like that idea. Propaganda for Endgame, Bunny on Run. Oh, uh, nah. Actually, not too familiar. Oh, propaganda. Oh, for the um, Avenger new Avengers movie. Is that what you're talking about? Um, 
Yeah, potentially. Oh, Jabon3 said, you have landed in the center of a giant farm field and some humans have approached you. Do you A, vaporize the humans, B, try to communicate to the humans, or C, erase the humans' memories and move to a new area, says Jabon3. So we could maybe use that for, uh, for the, uh, I guess not the option one, because that wouldn't be becoming an undercover earthling. That would be more like diving straight into Earth as an alien and trying to blend in without any disguise, which is a possible option. Um, we could maybe do something like that. I like that. I like the fact that there are options there. We can sort of branch off into different paths. And this, this is definitely going to get very bloated very quickly, but that's OK. This is largely text anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, but we will, uh, we'll, see if we can, we'll see if we need to refactor it eventually. We might need to, honestly. Um, OK, so Jabon 3's idea. I like Jabon 3's idea. So I'm going to say we're going to create that as, a, as another, I guess, option. And we'll say that that is, um, do I want to organize it this way? I guess so. We'll keep everything roughly sequential, I think. Um, so we'll say farm field options is equal to. Whoops. And we might not use this right away, but you have landed in the center of a giant farm field, and some humans have approached you. Do you A, we'll say 1. We'll keep it consistent. We'll use 1, one through x instead of A through whatever, so that we don't get confused when um, entering input. Vaporize the humans. 2. Try to communicate to the humans. Or three, erase the humans, uh, the humans' memories and move to a new area. OK, cool. We will do that. Give me just one second here. OK. So this is good. This is good so far. We don't have to use the farm field options right away. Um, what we can do is keep it sort of in our back pocket for a later time, um, at which point we can end up start doing it. Um, so let's go ahead now and let me just keep up with all the chat so I can see where we're going, see if anybody made any suggestions. Or you could taste terrible making all the humans hate peanut butter in time. Ooh, that's, that's clever. I like that, Asley. I like that a lot, actually. So did we already write that in? So become a peanut butter jar. We'll make that part of the peanut butter narrative, right? The peanut, the option three narrative. Um, so we'll say, um, we're going to say something like this, undercover earthling narrative, right? And then we'll say, this will be the uh, telepathy narrative. Then the peanut butter jar narrative and attack humans narrative. Now, I'm not entirely sure where the farm field options should fall under. I'm going to guess the attack humans narrative. But the, this sort of gives us more options, I think. But we'll, we'll do this. We'll keep this in the farm field options um, narrative section, I guess. That seems to make sense to me. Um, what could be? <laughs> Upon landing, you saw a furry creature playing with an earthling from a distance and decided to shapeshift into it. Ah, oh, so the turning into a dog narrative. OK, that's interesting. Turn, turn. Uh, OK, so, uh, oh, um, well, that doesn't necessarily, that could be part of the, we'll make that part of the attack narrative, I guess, right? Yeah, we could do that. We'll maybe make that part of the attack narrative. So. Um, We'll say uh, become dog choice. Oh, but see, the thing with that sandwich is we're going to actually need to, we're going to need to actually decide. We need to make the choice to do that. So that needs to be in a particular point in time, I guess. So become dog choice, I think it would be better off as. Um, Upon landing, you see a furry creature playing with an earthling from a distance and decide to uh, shape shift 
into it. So what this could be, this could be like maybe after number three here from the farm field options, then we go over to the become the dog choice, right? So that could be good. So let's say infiltrate option. So um, how, what's a clean way to do this? I guess we could just do, do I want to write separate functions for it? <laughs> Then we don't get to preserve prior options is the only problem. But is that, a, is that an issue? If they all are completely separate branching paths, I guess that doesn't really matter too much. So we could say, um, <laughs> we'll just keep it simple. We'll say if infiltrate option is equal to and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a, a number. We're going to say to int, we're going to int it. So this int function, basically, when you, when you enter string input into the console, it's just a string. So if you try to compare it to other numbers, it's not going to work because it treats string data as different from number data. And so if we want to just, well, I guess it wouldn't matter in this case because we're just comparing it to if it's equal to something. But we're going to say if it's equal to 1, the number 1, whoops, I'm used to Lua, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to, let's call a function. Let's say that we have a function called, um, what would that be? That is the undercover, we'll say undercover narrative, right? So I'll run a function called undercover narrative, which doesn't exist yet. Uh, elif infiltrate option is equal to 2. Then we'll say, and this is, this is a situation where we could actually start piecing things out into different files. Because these functions, we could just import them from other Python files, and this would make things a little bit less bloated. So we might end up looking at that in just a little bit. So if infiltrate option is equal to 2, this is going to be the, telep uh, the telepathy narrative. Tele uh, telepathy narrative. Elif infiltrate option is equal to um, 3. This is peanut butter jar narrative. Peanut butter jar narrative. Um, and do we have five narratives? No, we just had four narratives. Um, and then we'll just say else, uh, and this will say, this is the attack narrative, right? Yep, attack narrative. And so this is a situation in which we might be able to get away with starting to create some new files. So I just create a new file here called undercover.py, and then telepathy. So I apologize, I'm not keeping up with the chat quite super well right now, but I'm going to read through everything here in just a second and we'll get back on track. So telepathy narrative, peanut butter jar narrative. So peanut butter jar dot pi. I don't, this doesn't need to be telepathy dot pi. This needs to be um, telepathy narrative dot pi. It just needs to be telepathy dot pi. And then attack narrative. So attack dot pi. And then now what we can do is in main, if I go up here, I could say, Import um, uh, undercover narrative from uh, undercover.py. I think that should work. And then uh, this might need to be a string. Oof, I'm like, for some reason, forgetting how to actually import in Python, which is embarrassing. I'm so used to Lua, Lua syntax. And I was just using this yesterday. I was just importing yesterday, actually. Um, how does it work here? Da, da, da. Import spam. I think you don't need it. It doesn't need to be as a string, right? It can just be the literal Python thing. I'm surprised they don't have like examples. Import from as. Oh, do you have to do import uh, from the thing import? I think that might be it. So from, so from import, uh, sorry, from, uh, what is it? What are the different ones? Infiltrate, from infiltrate import, uh, ba, 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 infiltrate narrative. I think that's right. From peanut butter jar. Import peanut butter narrative from 
telepathy, import telepathy narrative. And from undercover, import undercover narrative. And the thing with these, we might actually end up needing these to be separate folders because I could easily see like undercover having a different options that all maybe link to other files, which all have like a, a, a sub narrative, so to speak. And those might have sub narratives, et cetera, et cetera. But probably we could get away with just having each main narrative have a separate folder rather than series of subfolders. Um, but I think this should work. I don't think I have to write .py there. So if I were to take, um, so if I were to call that, if I were to just basically write def uh, attack narrative and say print uh, attack narrative, uh, def peanut butter narrative, print peanut butter narrative. So I apologize, this is a little bit dry. This is a little bit of boilerplate that we need just to make sure that the things don't get too overwhelmingly obtuse, which is what some folks mentioned back in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, def telepathy narrative, print telepathy narrative. Whoops. And uh, def undercover narrative, print under cover narrative. Cool. So very exciting stuff. Let me, let me just run this and make sure it works. Uh, no module named infiltrate. So there is, a th I think you need to create an init.py if I'm not mistaken. So I think it's just as simple as making a dot, um, isn't it just like dot in, or uh, underscore init.py like that? And doesn't that allow us to, to do it? Am I not mistaken? No module named infiltrate. Oh, you know what? I don't. I think that's that's when you have a folder. Yep, that's when you have a folder, right? Sorry, I'm a bit rusty with Python modules. It's been a, a little bit of a of a time since I've done modules. I'm so used to again Lua programming and using that because I taught the course and that's all I do on stream. So I need to just remember exactly how to get that to work. Um. Oh, do I just need to import just the raw import? So it would just be like import infiltrate and then import peanut butter jar like that. It might be mistaken. Maybe somebody already put it in the chat for me. Oh, there is no infiltrate. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Import infiltrate narrative. Does this end up working? Oh, these are. Sorry, this is this is roughly this is pretty embarrassing. Python module import file in same folder. Oh, it needs to be in a package. So we have the init.py, right? Oh, does it need to be? No, we have the init.py. Oh, does this need to be? Oh, OK. So I need to just do infiltrate. Wait, I don't have infiltrate. What did I, what did I, oh, what, what was it? Undercover telepathy. Oh, OK. Undercover telepathy, peanut butter, and attack. OK. Attack, peanut butter jar, telepathy, and undercover. Try that. Does that work? Yes. OK, awesome. Uh, and then we'll say four. Attack narrative is not defined. So what we need to do now is import, uh, so from 
tac import tac narrative. This should work from peanut butter jar import peanut butter jar narrative. From telepathy import telepathy narrative. And then from undercover import uh, undercover narrative. Is that going to work? Why does that not work? That is interesting. Peanut butter jar, def peanut butter narrative. Yep, how's that? Oh, peanut butter narrative instead of peanut butter jar narrative. Does that work? That's probably why. Yep, there we go. I missed, I had a typo. I called it peanut butter narrative, not peanut butter jar narrative. So apologies for that slight little slump in the excitement as I got the uh, other modules sort of up and running, but now we have all of this stuff in here um, sort of split out into other files. And I had to remember how to use Python modules, which it's been a long time, as you can clearly see. So now let's go ahead and bring these farm field uh, options in the become dog choice. We'll bring those out to the attack option, because I think that was the, uh, I think that was sort of where we had those two options available to us. And then uh, let me just make sure, <laughs> let me just make sure that I haven't missed too much chat, which I, I've missed a lot of chat, actually. I apologize. Uh, VD Hug, will this code be available in GitHub after the stream? It will indeed. I'm going to publish it to GitHub at the very beginning of the chat, or very end of the stream. Once you shapeshift, eat all the existing peanut butter, but you have stored it rather than digested it. Soul to Sun says, interesting. So as the, as the dog, are we going to do that? Because that, like, that sounds like an adventure. So. That'll, that'll need to be, uh, that will need to be a choice, but how do we play that off as a sequence? I guess, I guess we could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could absolutely do that. Um, so we'll, we'll call that the become dog victory, right? So we'll say, um, once you have shape shifted into a dog, you eat all of the peanut butter uh, in the world, but since you are an alien, you have simply stored it, not digested it, and bring it back to your alien overlords. There we go. That's the be that's the dog victory, right? But we should probably have a way to get there. In a well, I guess I guess it doesn't have to be super convoluted, right? If we choose the farm, if we choose the um, the option to get to the to attack the Earth. We get to a farm field. We erase the human's memories and then move to a new area. And then we become a dog. Then it kind of works. But I guess maybe what we could do is we could make the dog, becoming a dog, an option instead of mandatory. So we could say, upon landing, you see a free creature playing with an earthling from a distance. Um, and then we say, like, what, what do you do? And then we have one, two, and three, maybe. The th three options for the dog sort of branch of our narrative, right? So pretty, pretty cool, pretty interesting, pretty unique. APS Knight, what are you streaming today? We're streaming uh, me failing at Python modules and also the chat creating a uh, live text adventure using only, well, almost only input that the chat has provided. I've, I've done a little bit of creative um, exercise here. And I'm sort of trying to tailor it so that it works well. But it's uh, largely, almost completely, um, uh, based upon what the folks in the chat are saying. Bunny on the Run says, take all the peanut farmers on the Earth and bring them back to the ship. Oh, OK. So would that be option two then here of the uh, talk to the farmers? So it would be like, talk to farmers. Oops, can't type. Uh, options equal to you <laughs> talk to the farmers and persuade them to, um, or rather, you talk to the, f uh, you try, try to initiate a conversation with the local peanut farmers. Um, how do you guide the conversation? And so maybe option two would be um, try to persuade the peanut farmers to board your ship, right? That would be an option. That's an option. We could do that. 
and then maybe after that you persuade the peanut farmers, and then you and then the, the victory text is um, as the you oh that would be it right that would be um, talk to farmers victory would be something along the lines of whoops um, what would it be you successfully persuade the peanut farmers. Of peanut farmers to board your ship. Um, sensing this will be an easy task, um, henceforth, you embark on a worldwide peanut farmer gathering expedition and steal all of Earth's peanut farming talent, Th thus ridding the Earth of peanuts and granting your species infinite peanut agriculture prowess. There we go. A little bit flowery, but it does the job. That's, that will be our Talk to Farmers victory, Bunny on the Run. So excellent suggestion. Give the humans space tech and wait for them to bring peanut butter to you. I don't know, says Grim Waltzman. Interesting. Interesting. Give the human space tech and wait for them to bring peanut butter to you. So that would maybe be another option of the talk to farmers, right? Give the. <laughs> we also need ways to fail because you know generally in a text adventure, not only do you win, but you also generally meet your demise. You usually do something that kills you and then ruins the game for you. So, um, I think it's going to be a little. I think we need to introduce a little bit of, of uh, bad stuff in here, too. Maybe make it possible to lose. That would be nice. Ax Nilo, are you going to do some object-oriented programming stuff for option navigation, or are we going to do the classic chain of if statements? Probably the latter, honestly. I haven't given too much thought to how I would design an object-oriented way of navigating through this, and I'm sure there are other ways of, I think, doing this that would be uh, ideal. I'd have to do some research on it to find out. Like People have probably written libraries for this, honestly. Um, but it would take, I think, more time, and it would be drier to do that than it would just to like write all this out and then just write the, the logic. I think that would be a little bit easier and faster for the stream. But if this were like an eight-hour stream, I would say maybe we could do that. An option could be to act like an alien-obsessed human to the point where the other humans ignore you because they think you are insane. Oh, interesting. Good idea. There's a lot of creativity in the chat, what SHM746 is saying. Doggos like peanut butter. This is true. Does our alien have fingers? Because he could throw lasers out of his fingers. He doesn't until you decide that he does, Alejo. Everybody that's in the chat is, there, is the author of this, of this amazing adventure. And there is so much chat that I am just like, I am just having an aw awful time. <laughs> Colton, you big goof. Nate, I'm sorry. I apologize, Nate, for my, for my lack of, of knowing Python modules. Um, by gum, he figured it out. Hey, we can figure out anything on stream. Lewis, for making simpler games, I personally learned Unity and very happy with it. Oh, yep, Unity is definitely an awesome way to go. I'm going to see what people have posted here most recently. Before the dog thing, you could have the alien try to work out what the furry animal was. Then one of them could be the dog choice, and make up the others could be interesting. Oh, like maybe we make it like a squirrel, and you get run over by a truck or something. That would be interesting, right? Um, a little bit less optimistic of an option, of an outcome, I would say. Do people want to Do people want to uh, maybe suggest how to actually carry that out? That was the same three years ago, says Whipstreet. Yeah. I do a lot of Python programming, but to be fair, I don't do a lot of module creation. At least I haven't in a while. So I had forgotten offhand exactly how the package semantics work. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a little bit. It's been a while. Could have built-in fail mechanics based on that. Interesting. Built-in fail mechanics based on that? So playing an, with an earthling from a distance, what do you do? So you could say, become the furry creature with a large tongue, but that sounds inappropriate. I'll say, become the furry creature 
playing with the earthling. We'll say that. And then we'll say for option two, maybe we could, do we want to say um, become a squirrel or something? You have now erased the human's memories. You move to a new area and find yourself in sand and see water waving around and see an earthling playing with the sand. Ah, interesting. Become the earthling. Wow, this is just so much. Can we create a website using Python? Please reply. Uh, eventually, we probably will, Ravi. We did with Flask, I believe. Kareem did a Flask tutorial where we made a um, Python website. But in today's stream, we're not doing a Python website. In the future, I would say probably, yeah. Um, you've now erased the human's memories. So, OK. The human's memories is the, uh, I, that, I think that leads directly to the dog choice, right? So if I say, OK, so let, let's first of all write out the flow of this. So we'll say print farm field options. Print farm field options. And then th what this will do is this will print this out. So you've landed in the center of a giant farm field, and some humans have approached you. Do you? And what we should also do is because this is the attack option, you decide, um, what we'll do is actually we'll say, you decide that the best course of action is to attack the humans directly. Directionally. <laughs> directly. So we'll say, you've landed, and some humans have approached you. Do you? And then we'll do that. So now we at least have established that we are attacking the humans. You have decided that's the best course of action. And so this is the first part of the attack narrative. And so we can choose to vaporize the humans, communicate to the humans, or erase the humans' memories and move on. So we'll say, um, we'll say uh, choice one is equal to farm field options. So we'll say if choice one is equal to, and this is horrible, by the way. So we'll say farm choice. Farm choice is equal to the farm fields options. So we'll say if the farm choice is equal to one, then what we're going to do is, this is where we try to vaporize the humans, right? So we'll say, we'll say vaporize the humans. So we're going to need a, we're going to need a path from the vaporizing the humans, right? We'll say elif farm choice is equal to two. We'll say, uh, this is the communicate with the humans. So try to communicate with the humans. And what we decided on doing is that that was going to be the talk to farmers option. So then we'll say, communicate option. We'll say, communicate with humans. Communicate option is equal to um, and sorry, this is going to be input on farm field options, and this is going to be input on talk to farmers option. Talk to farmers option. We'll make this. Is this farm field options? Yeah, it is. This should be options as well, and then options. So cool. So this is sort of how it's going to work. So we have the. Basically, if we've decided to vaporize the humans, we have some sort of logic. And then if we decided to communicate with the humans, we're going to get input again with this new prompt where it says, talk to the farmers, right? And so then what we want to do is we're going to say in there, if communicate uh, option is equal to 1, what this is going to be is the, what is this? We haven't decided on this. So this is to do elif communicate option is equal to two. This is a victory. So what we can do is we can say, this is going to be basically be the end of the game at this point. We'll say, uh, talk to farmers victory. We'll say print, talk to farmers, uh, not options, but victory. Else um, to do, right? We haven't, we haven't actually decided on what we want the course of action to be. But we could actually follow this logic now. We could actually test it out. So I can say, if we run the application, we should be able, oops, did I mess this up? Let's see, line 47 in attack.py is, oh, because we don't have anything in here yet. So we have to, if you don't have anything in an if statement, Python will complain. It'll say, oh, I expected you to have some indentation. It doesn't recognize comments as being that indentation. So you have to actually say pass. If you have an empty statement, like a to-do is not going to work. So to-do and pass both basically work. So that's, that's essentially what we need to do. We need to write pass 
to make it actually render. OK, so we get our, our whole thing. So we have our, our prompt, we have our title, we have all that stuff. If we wanted to get really fancy and wanted to spend some time on this, we could make ASCII art that says alien, uh, Aliens Intergalactic Marvel. I'll take, I'll take a look and see if there's maybe a web generator for that, because that would actually be pretty sick. And what we're going to do is we're going to decide on um, attacking the humans. So I'm going to say option four, attack the humans. You decide that the best course of action is to attack the humans directly. You've landed in the center of a giant farm field, and some humans have approached you. Do you vaporize the humans, try to communicate with them, or erase their memories? So we're going to try to communicate with them. And uh, for some reason, that failed. Why did that fail? Do, 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 do. Wait, talk to farmers victory? That should not have failed. Oh. <laughs> because we're not actually converting it to a number. So remember, we have to convert this whole thing to a number. We could also just compare it to a string. That'll work too. So let's run that one more time. We're going to uh, attack the humans. We're going to try to communicate to the humans. And then we're going to try to persuade the peanut butter farmers to board the ship. And when we do, we got to the end of the game, and we've won. And it would be cool to make this actually say, you won in big, big ASCII text. Um, but you know we'll, we'll get to that point when it, when we when, it, when we need to. You should have passed to avoid errors. Says binary warrior was one step ahead of me. Uh, make it to do function problem solved. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Oh, Andre's in the chat. Andre, we're gonna need some uh, we're gonna need some suggestions for you. So we have a text adventure that we split out into multiple files. Notice that it's basically just a bunch of uh, strings, but we have a main narrative here, which basically says you know. Um, Earthlings that are using their full potential are eating peanut butter. It's the most precious resource in the galaxy. We need it for intergalactic travel. Um, so you're an alien named Zauge, which we've decided from the chat. That was a, a collection. And by the way, we need to actually include that in our prompt, I think. So let's say you are an alien named, um, we're not using a format string here. I don't think format strings work. Do format strings work with that? Can we say hero like that? I've actually never done a, a format string on a triple quoted string. Yep, it works, for, works great. OK, cool. Easy. Um, but this is a little bit um, messed up. Let me just fix this real quick. So now we actually use that name. We weren't using the name before, but I think that's a very important feature of our, of our code. So anyway, Andre, what we need from you is we need Basically, we have four options. We're currently working on the attack the humans option, where in our attack.py, we have basically three main options at the beginning to vaporize the humans, communicate with the humans, or erase their memories and move to a new area. If you communicate with the humans and then persuade them to board your ship, you win the game. So what we need is let's finish the, the talk to the humans options. We need another option for talking to the farmers. We need, so currently we have persuade the peanut farmers to board the ship as one option, but we need one more and then one more. And then ideally they should both be losses, but we can maybe make another win condition if we want to. But um, essentially, we just need more avenues. Humans are already being vaporized. So Andre, what suggestions do you have for how we can talk to the farmers? Oh, ex nihilo, format strings, yes. Uh, very awesome feature of Python. Normally, I use them in non-triple strings, but you can just put an F in front of the, uh, it looks like any string. And then you can, just like in JavaScript, surround your variable with curly brackets and then put the variable inside of it. And then it's good. Um, take me to your leader scenario, and then they get the pitchforks and it's game over. You think the pitchforks are going to destroy the aliens? I guess maybe. Uh, we, could, we could humorize it. We could, uh, we could make it funny. So we could say, uh, you demand to speak to their leader, right? So we say, talk to farmers. Leader is equal to a triple string like this. Or we say, you demand to speak to the farmer's leader. Enraged at your insolence. Um, enraged at your brazen request. The farmers gather their nearby pitchforks, surround you, and disable your spaceship with their unanticipated technology. You lose. Um, we, make, we can make it more eloquent. We'll say, your civilization will have to seek 
out peanut butter another millennium. Something like that, right? And so now what we can do is we can say, if the option is equal to 1, print talk to farmers leader. And now we'll run the game. We will attack the humans. We will uh, try to communicate to the humans. And they will demand to speak to their leader. You demand to speak to the farmer's leader and raise the abrasion request. The farmers gather their nearby pitchforks trying to even disable your spaceship with their unanticipated technology. The aliens didn't know about pitchforks and couldn't possibly have a way to defend against them. So, oh, ASCII art generator, nice. Uh, I am new to CS50. What is your name? Says Whitson. My name is Colton Ogden. I am a technologist at Harvard and I work with CS50 full time and uh, sort of co host and lead these streams where we take concepts that we don't have time to talk about necessarily in CS50 and we explore them a little bit more in detail either through completely from scratch implementations of projects um, or maybe discussing a technology more high level or a library more high level and sort of dive into it without maybe being focused on a project. Um, so today this is uh, a little bit more lighthearted, a more stream oriented, uh, chat oriented stream where we take suggestions and uh, we're seeing what we can do. And it's kind of really basic Python. We're just basically using if statements and not really getting that crazy with it. But I think it's a fun little way to explore um, interactive like chat working with uh, the project. So um, cool. So talk to farmers options. We need one more option. Who wants to suggest a third option for, the, uh, for our farmers branch of this sequence of the narrative? And uh, while, we, while I wait for that, I can maybe get an ASCII art generator for our, uh, for our title. It was, what was it called again? It was, it was an amazing title, Aliens Intergalactic Marvel. It's pretty massive. Um, so we'll say smush. Can we do that? Doesn't work. Oh, whoa, OK. Not it's testing a bunch of them. We need small, we need small text because it's way too big. Um, that's pretty small. I like how, I, I like how this, is, this looks. It's kind of like sci-fi looking almost. So we'll do that. I'll make my prompt a little bit larger, and we'll see if this, we'll see if this works. Let's print it. Let's do uh, title is equal to boom, boom, boom. Bring this down here. <laughs> that is massive. Okay, so it's probably not going to fit, but we'll we'll test it out. Oof, that looks nasty. Okay, if I shrink it down, will it fit? Yeah, it's not quite fitting. I need a smaller, I need a smaller font. It's so hard. It's such a long title is the problem. Um, this one's kind of condensed. Let's try it. Okay, is this gonna work? Did I screw that up? Maybe. Uh, it's better, but it's uh, why is it screwed up? Oh, because this is like that. Did I miss the first line? Oh, I think I missed the first line. Oh, I did miss the first line. Silly me. Let's copy that, bring that back over here, and let's replace this like that. There we go. And then we don't need these extra lines. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to rerun it, see if this works. Cool, now I can zoom back in. Beautiful. Have it like alien intergalactic marvel. Looks pretty great, right? This is a little this looks more like a, a legitimate text adventure that you might see in a uh, something that might have been released as an actual game. Just a little bit more artistic. Let's see what the options are. Uh, oh, Bella Cures had an option. Okay. Um, Bella, if you could remind me, I apologize. I, it was way back in the chat. I'm going I'm to scroll back and see if I can find it. Um, let me see. 
Oh, I think it's beyond where the chat was. But if you could, if you could uh, repaste it for me, Bella, we can use it. I think I might have, I might have even put it. Did I put it in here in the? Um, I don't remember. I apologize. As soon as you as soon as you paste it back in, I will remember it. She already wrote it again. Look up. Oh, I must have missed it. Oh, punch the farmer in his face since this is the greeting on your planet. I love that. And then what does that lead to? What does that lead to? Punch the farmer in his face since that's your planetary greeting. I like it. So this would be uh, talk to farmers punch. So if I, if I were being extra silly, I would say maybe that the farmer was actually John Cena. And when you punched him, he wrestled you and just destroyed you and eliminated you. And that's a loose condition. But True Kinesis is saying the farmers try to fight you, but your advanced muscles destroy them all. Um, hmm. Interesting. Leader was not impressed. So do we want to make this a lose condition or a win condition? Leader says they will make Earth great again by capturing one of us and run weird experiments on us and extract some info because the leader got angry. The, the farmer you punched is impressed and takes you in as a peanut puncher. OK. All right. The farmer is impressed <laughs> with your punch and takes you in as a peanut puncher. Uh, does this have a, um, wh where does this lead us? What's, what's the, what's the um, I guess, does this split off again, or does this have a, a winning or a losing condition? You forget to contact your race because something. Oh, does it, <laughs> so do we just forever remain a peanut farmer and never get back to Earth? OK. Maybe, oh yeah, maybe something like that. You fall in love with the art of peanut punching and forget all about your alien brethren, dooming them to a life devoid of peanuts. OK. You make friends with a child and fly over the moon on a bicycle, says Asley. Oh, wow, what a, uh, what a subtle reference. All right, I need to get my work done. I thought I could just listen to this chat passively, but you're just too darn entertaining. Well, I take that as a compliment. Thank you very much, X Nilo. I appreciate it. Hope to see you again in the near future. Definitely tune in. Um, hopefully, we can start doing more streams that are community-oriented like this. This is a good time. I'm a fan. Um, become the furry creature playing with the Earthling. Uh, I do like Asley's suggestion on how to integrate ET into this, but we have to find the right way to do it. So does that does that maybe lead in from the like the dog branch the, the uh, become the furry creature playing with the earthling? <laughs> like maybe go up to the um, <laughs> go up to the earthling and ask to phone home maybe, and then that leads into flying over the moon and crashing the bicycle and dying or something. That could be a potential a potential avenue. Uh, Avenue. Suratan, hello. He's still a farm leader, right? We got into a farm CIA leader. Make the dog choice, become the creature choice, and you assimilate all animals on Earth and become the prime predator. Ooh. Interesting. Local end host. Farmers got a talent to persuade the alien to get away from the planet Earth, so they figure out all farmers to say something to the alien. The planet is to say a story. Each person, but stories all quite copy of each other, but not really. They have just changed. The sequence of words and endings, if the alien read the word, it would be persuaded. So aliens should figure that out. Aliens got a talent to persuade the alien to get away from planet Earth. Uh, sorry, parsing that sentence. Farmers have a talent to persuade the alien. I apologize if I'm misunderstanding what you're writing.
Oh, I see. So the, basically the farmers are all getting together, unionizing to dissuade the aliens from landing on Earth. That's possible too, yeah. Celebratory fireworks and all. Aliens run away thinking it's full-on warfare. I left, our character stays behind. So I think in this example, we've basically gone to Earth solo as, a, as an alien in a UFO, but I don't think it's been specifically... Uh, I don't think it's been specified. Excuse me. I don't think that that has been quite written out, whether we are a single alien or whether we are a, like a whole group of aliens, if our, a whole civilization is coming. Have you shaped into a dog? You are tempted to chase cats when you see them. Could that be a limitation? Oh, that could be potential. Um, well, what we did was we we basically made the dog victory a victory. We made it a, like a victory condition. So when you turn to a dog, you basically eat all the peanut butter on Earth, but you don't digest it, or you don't uh, digest it. You just store it and bring it back to your alien overlords. So I don't know if we can kind of come back from that too much. Um, I think there's another op. We have more options here with like if we decide to become a dog, right? Because we can decide to become the furry creature, which is a dog, or we can decide to do two other things instead, which was one was approach the earthling and ask to phone home. And so what we could do, we could do that, and then that was, I think, Asley's suggestion. And then she also gave the clear, the, the, the go-ahead on making a, like, maybe what we do is we say, okay, so let's say become... ET ending. <laughs> what we do is we say, you approach the Earthling and, and crudely ask if you can phone home. The human awkwardly obliges by transporting you in his bike basket. Um, with your alien <laughs> powers and lack of patience, you imbue the bicycle with levitation and fly across the moon. However, you, your impatience leads to boredom and then uh, fatigue, causing you to uh, causing you to um, forget your levitating, bringing the bike crashing back to Earth and wiping both of you out in gruesome form. So very, very rosy verbiage to basically say that you crashed in a bicycle and died, and that's your ET ending. So that will be option two for the dog choice. So that would be, what is that? Farm choice is one. What is that? Does that communicate with humans? Did we have that in here? I don't think we had that in here, right? That was the, oh, that was the erase the human's memories and move to a new area. So uh, that's if the option is three, else, dog option. So we say um, dog option is equal to int of the input of the, um, what one was it? Become dog choice. Become dog choice. And then what we say is if um, dog option is equal to one, that'll be that'll be becoming the dog, right? So in that case, we can just print um, what is it? Become dog victory. L if dog option is equal to two, and this is I think what we just did, which was the approach the Earthling and ask to phone home. So the ET option. So we'll say print um, become ET ending. And then we need another option. OK, a bittersweet ending would be you transforming into a dog completely because you can't shapeshift for an extended period of time and forgot about it. You lost all your memories and grew fond of humans and realized they're actually nice and you get peanut treats every day. Um, hmm. <laughs> this went from Marvel to DC real quick. This ganache. <laughs> oh, that escalated. Become alien ending. Oh, did I, did I say that? Um, does this become ET ending, right? Right here? But, um, become the free creature playing with the Earthling. I'm trying to figure out if you want to have this side option 
of becoming a dog permanently, it's kind of hard because we've already cemented the ending. And we, we also want to get to the other branches. We have three other branches we want to experiment with. And we might not fill out the whole game, right? This is more of an illustration. This isn't necessarily to make the entire thing. Um, but, you know. Hacker Official, did you ever create a game in Python? If yes, which game? Um, a long time ago, I experimented with Py, was it PyGL? Um, it was either PyGL or another Python OpenGL library and PyGame and also um, the bindings for Python for libgdx, which is, what is that? Um, nothing too crazy. I usually make games in Lua and Love2D, especially on stream. I don't do a lot of Python game programming. The Python programming I usually do is for work and is usually more systems oriented um, and like automation oriented, not necessarily oriented towards gaming. Become alien ending. OK. Uh, I do like that. I do like Sandwich's bittersweet ending. I think it's a great ending. Um, but I don't know how to integrate it yet. Uh, M. Kloppenberg, Martin, good to see you. We've been programming a, a text adventure for a long time. And so I'm going to call on you, actually, to um, give us the third option here. When we become, when we have the option to sort of become a dog, or, or we see a furry creature in the distance that is playing with an Earthling, we want a third option for what we as an alien are going to do in that scenario. So the first one is that we become that furry creature. We sort of shape shift into it, and when we do that, we end up becoming a dog, getting to access all the peanut butter in the world, eat it, and bring it to our alien leader. Um, the second option is that we approach the Earthling, ask to phone home, we get transported in a bike, but uh, we fly over the moon, but we crash and die because we're too impatient. So we need a third ending. So sandwiches ending we could get to after the first option. Yeah, that's possible. Um, it's just hard because in the first option we're already becoming the dog, so it doesn't it doesn't split super cleanly. That's the only problem that I have. Final option could be just to explore or look around. Then the print would be, because you are small, you are in awe of the big machine that is cultivating the land and get crushed. Attack the creature. The creature just plays with you instead. Interesting. I like that. We're going to get Martin involved, though. Martin hasn't contributed anything to the, to the, to the uh, adventure yet. So Martin, I want to hear your suggestions, your thoughts, what you want to have happen. Seen Captain America? Uh, I saw Captain America a long time ago. Would you mind to do to add regex? Um, I don't think a regex works in this context. We did a regex stream. David and I did one a long time ago. If you want to check that out, it should be on YouTube, YouTube.com/cs50. If you're curious, regular expressions. But I don't think in this context, since we're doing anything fancy with um, parsing strings, I don't think we need need to really use regexes here. So Martin, the world is waiting on you. What's going to be the next? What's going to be the third option? Where are we going? Scan for life forms is cool, says Tux Man. And if Martin, if it's if it's uh, too much too soon, don't don't uh, hesitate to say you want to pass, and you can always suggest stuff later. Will you do a natural language processing stream anytime soon? Um, we don't have one necessarily set up yet, but I can speak to some people that are into that and see if they might want to do one. Oh, he's typing on his phone. OK. Got it. Um, if he's typing on his phone, maybe he might be typing something. We need some product placement here. Let's say our alien can call to McDonald's and order a Big Macs for, for furry. <laughs> yeah, that's potentially a thing. We could definitely do that. Alien can call to McDonald's, order a Big Mac, but where? And what's the what's the what's the plan? Use regex and break down the entire planet Earth because you mistyped the condition. This is a very advanced regular expression technology. So use a regex to parse what you see. Use a, use a I can't type. Use a regex to parse what you see. When, why think small? Aliens get a Tesla car. We all get Teslas. <laughs> Hack the Tesla, get the Tesla, right? So we'll say regex ending. Using your new regex technology, 
if Martin is writing a suggestion, Martin, if you are writing a suggestion, I will, I will use your suggestion. But uh, it's unclear. If you, I didn't know if you meant you were typing on your phone because you were busy or whether you were typing a suggestion on your phone. So we'll, we'll use this. Uh, maybe we use the regex in a different context. So Martin gets option three here. But we say maybe, maybe they get a regex somewhere else up here. So do, have we done anything related to vaporizing the humans? We'll, we'll do that. We'll say that. We'll say <laughs> vaporize humans. Alien helps solve the world's issues by infiltration as a dog. Uh, so we, the, the problem is that we already have the, we already have an option where we become the, the dog, and that leads directly to a victory. So there isn't really an option at that point. So I'm thinking of something, if we could get something completely different from becoming a dog or approaching the earthling, like something completely, like someone said scanning the local life forms. I like that. I like that idea. And to, be, to Martin's credit, he's coming in at a very sort of, uh, sort of inopportune time in the midst of the adventure. So I don't blame him for sort of not knowing the context completely. But basically, we're an alien and we, have the, we, we, see, an, we see an earthling playing with a furry creature, which is a dog. We can become the furry creature, we can approach the human to ask to phone home, or something completely different. And that's sort of where you come in, Martin, if you want to suggest an idea. We will use Andre's suggestion of vaporizing the humans with a regex. We'll do that. So we'll say, using your latest in regex technology, you create a broken regex that breaks down the entire planet of Earth ruining your chances. Oh, so we'll say including their supply of peanut butter, ruining your mission entirely. Right? So there we go. So we'll say if option one in the farm field options, which is down here, so we'll say print, and we'll say, that, what was this? This was uh, vaporize humans. Vaporize humans. Boom. Just like that. And so we're pretty close to finishing this, I think. Oh, we do have three. Oh, no, we have this, this option left. And then we communicate it with the humans, erase their memories, and then vaporize them with the regex, which is pretty impressive. Can we use the ending I suggested as a secret ending, like if you use types 4 as an option but not really show option 4? Uh, Sandwich, can you repeat your ending for me? I apologize. There's a lot of options coming through here. I don't have all of them at the top of my memory, unfortunately. And I apologize if I've missed any messages in the chat. I've, uh, I've certainly tried to, uh, to keep on top of everything. But um, uh, we do want to, sorry, I got distracted. Well, I'm not on top of everything, but I want to make sure everything gets, uh, gets included. Bittersweet dog ending. Uh, shoot, I don't remember what it was exactly. I didn't type it out. Let me see if it's up here. Sandwich. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see. OK. You get peanut treats every day. I like it. OK, yep, yeah, we'll do that. So let me type that in here. So we'll make option number four. Um, so let's see. Um, that would be up he not here. Where would it be? It would be here, actually. Four. Uh, they won't be displayed, right? But if they type in four, the secret option is going to be, where is it? One, two. This become dog choice. Dog option is one. Dog option is two. LF dog option is three. We're going to pass. And then LF dog option is four. So this is the secret choice. Secret choice. We'll say print. Uh, secret a dog ending. And then if we go up here, where the where's the dog stuff? Right here. Secret dog ending is equal to. Um, you transform completely into the dog. Um, 
forgetting that you can't shape shift for an extended period of time, and you forget all about your mission. You lose all your memories and grow fond of humans and realize that they are actually quite nice. To top it off, you get peanut treats every day. Cool. So there's a secret ending. That's how you do a secret ending. Don't display it in the prompt, but still have a condition that checks for, for the number four. And if you type in the number four and it's a secret ending, then you get the secret ending, secret happy ending. Um, I think it's kind of a bittersweet ending because you, you sort of still lose the mission, but you, uh, it's, every, everything's sort of nice. It's, it's, it's still happy. It still feels good, right? So everything's good. So cool. Did you use my suggestion, a whoop streak? Oh, I'm losing track of everybody's suggestions. Oh, man. I mean, this is a good problem to have. I'm so happy that so many people are into the chat. Um, I'm going to have to scroll. I'm scrolling back up to see if I see your suggestion, whoop streak. Uh, Nate, if you, can, uh, if you can just repeat what it was, I would be more than happy to try and include it. SLCH000 says, good stream. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, you have now erased the human's memories. You moved to a new area and find yourself in the sand. Oh, I see. The uh, memory erase uh, path. Uh, let's see. That was the, that was here. That was uh, upon landing. OK. Hmm. <laughs> oh, we could, what we could do is we could say fly to a new location. That's perfect. So we'll say fly. <laughs> Excuse me, to a new location. So, new location. And that new location is going to be um, after erasing the human's memories, you decide to fly to a second new location. Uh, you find yourself in the sand and see water waving around and see an earthling playing with the sand. You approach her and ask for the nearest peanut butter store. Source. Uh, she happily gives you a peanut butter jar full of energy. You walk out of the beach unsure what to do do next do you one two three so this is where we need some more options new location cannot be found until you solve a puzzle problem designed by doug lloyd you spend the next five millennia trying to solve the puzzle <laughs> yeah ouch call mcdonald's to order a big mac prey was poisoned by big mac earthling starts crying some options to calm down the earthling that sounds kind of dark. A little bit, a little dark. Go back and build a sandcastle. <laughs> I love it. All right, we'll, we'll go back. Go back and build a sandcastle. OK. It says, from East London. Or being the story, ask the alien, are you sure you want to do this? So adding a setting, if he doesn't click, don't ask me again. Oh, I see. Yeah, that would be possible. Um, we'd have to refactor a little bit of it to, to ask. So we might not incorporate it, but that would be a good idea uh, if you were to make a momentous choice. So we'll, yeah. That would be something to potentially add to it. Uh, you try to communicate and slowly fall in love. Uh, yeah, it's probably, yeah, probably not. <laughs> Maybe not. It's probably, a, yeah, it's probably a little girl. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> make it Chuck Norris. Oh, wow. Make a check noise. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, I can't, I can't just defile Nate's, I can't defile Nate's uh, sort of story like that. But we can add a subthread for Chuck, Chuck Norris if we want to meme it up and add Chuck Norris. Absolutely. Then you should give small hints about the secret ending. Um, maybe? Hmm. Well, 
What do you do amongst, <laughs> sup amongst, can't type, supposedly three choices? How about that? That's a kind of a not so subtle hint, but you know, it's a secret, still a secret. <laughs> As you're walking along the beach, you see a man run faster than light. <laughs> okay. Sandcastle. You decide to construct a sandcastle. While doing so, you see a man run across the beach. You see a man running faster than light across the beach. What do you do? This is such an interest. like I said, you never know what the adventure is going to look like when you do something like this. And that's exciting. It turns out that you're actually SpongeBob, says Adamantine. Fascinating thread. Um, maybe we could do that by, uh, maybe we could do that as part of going into the water, right? So we say, <laughs> one option should be like, oh, trip him with a stick. I love it. Trip him with a stick. <laughs> um, ignore, ignore the man running faster than light and step into the water. And then maybe step into water could be as soon as you set foot into the water, you realize a long suppressed fact about yourself. You're actually SpongeBob. You commit to a life under the sea living in your pineapple and forget all about peanut butter's existence. So kudos to uh, Adam for that amazing side thread there. So now we have a SpongeBob side thread. Asley says, ask the girl why they like peanut butter so much. Oh, OK, interesting. Um, ask the girl why they like peanut butter so much. So peanut butter girl. And then the, uh, she says, she gives you a peanut, oh, right. You ask the girl why she loves peanut butter so much. Um, and I have to, the chat is popping so much that I can't, I have to keep scrolling back up. Shape shift into David Hasselhoff. Man, how many memes are we gonna are we gonna cover today? She gives you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You understand that humans had it right all along and decide to eat the peanut butter instead of using it for intergalactic travel. Yum. The yum seals it. And so we have so many threads here. So OK, so this is fly to a new location, right? OK, so that's the becoming the dog choice. So this would be flying to a new location. So we say uh, new location is going to be equal to int of the input of, where is this? Um, new location, <laughs> OK? And then. If new location is going to be uh, is one, so we're basically going depth first in this uh, in this adventure. We're just covering basically one long thread of, of options rather than sort of covering everything, I guess, breadth first. But that's okay. This is this is interesting. So if the new location is equal to one, so we decided one was going to be the only option we implemented, which was going back to build a sandcastle. So we're going to do that. So we'll say um, sandcastle is going to be equal to int of the input of sandcastle. And then if sandcastle is equal to 1, what did we decide? We decided where's sandcastle? So trip Chuck Norris with a stick. That was option 1, right? So trip Chuck Norris with a stick. We haven't implemented that yet. Elif sandcastle is equal to 2, which was ignore the man. OK, step in the water. So that was the SpongeBob ending. 
So SpongeBob ending. So we'll say print SpongeBob. Um, wait, what did I? How what did I title it? Step in water. I title it Step in water. So we'll say step into water. L if sand castles equal to three, which is ask the girl why they like peanut butter so much. That was a peanut butter girl ending. So we'll print uh, peanut butter girl ending. So perfect. So now we could actually we could test this. So if I go back into my prompt here. Let's rerun this. We have aliens, intergalactic, Marvel, super awesome. I'm going to decide to attack the humans. We're going to erase the humans' memories, move to a new area. We're going to fly to a new location. Um, only have one option, so we're going to go back and build a sandcastle. Um, we see the man running faster than light across the beach. We are going to, let's test, uh, we're going to ignore them and step into the water. As soon as you step foot in the water, you realize a long suppressed fact about yourself. You're actually SpongeBob, so we've been an alien this whole time. Um, and we finally found our pineapple under the sea again. I'm going to rerun it. We're going to attack the humans. We're going to erase them, move to a new area, fly to a new location, back build a sandcastle. We're going to ask the girl why they like peanut butter so much. And then we get a uh, sort of an epiphany, if you will, about peanut butter and peanut butter jelly sandwiches. And we decide to um, eat the peanut butter instead of using it for intergalactic travel. So amazing ending. Now, we are missing the thread about tripping Chuck Norris with a stick. We probably want to make that a defeat condition, <laughs> I feel, because these two are both victories, sort of. Well, actually, no, you could argue that these are both actually losses. Well, it's, it's kind of up to the reader to decide on whether they're losses or victories, right? But I would say, maybe technically speaking, they're losses, though they feel like victories. But uh, I'll leave it up to the audience. What do we want to do with tripping people with a jar, or tripping Chuck Norris with a stick? Let's see what uh, let's see what people have ideas for that. Uh, no on butters. Wait, what? Un says true kinies. Sandcastle building. Move the third option of sandcastle up to the new location. Third option of sandcastle. Oh, I see. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. We can fix that. So that was here. And then, then we put that into here, right? We say LF new location is equal to two. And then we just print that uh, like that and like that. So we need to make option number two of new location actually the ask the girl why they like peanut butter so much. Consider that done. Boom. Let's test it, make sure it works. Oops, I screwed something up. Line 150. What did I screw up? Oh, whoops. <laughs> um, I think that should be good. OK, so we're going to attack the humans. We're going to erase the memories, move to a new area, fly to another area, ask the girl why like peanut butter so much, and then we still get the same thread. So that's all great. Sorry about that. I misinterpreted the flow of the story. SpongeBob turns out to be one of the seahorses that looks like a plant, so it turns out he's actually not SpongeBob, a leafy sea dragon. Oh, man. This could just get infinitely deep. The king of the ocean confronted you, and you were sent back to your home planet. Can we randomize the locations, asks Andre. Um, can we randomize the locations? Hmm. I don't know. Well, at this point, it might be a little bit troublesome. We could, we could do this. We could have a pool of, of things and have a sub-thread of that. Um, the way we've coded it now, I don't think that that's super feasible for us to refactor everything, and it'll be a little bit dry, I think, to do that. So we'll just continue, I think, the way that we're doing it. But that's, a great, that's an awesome idea for a more interesting story. Just make it different each time. Like, you appear at a new location, and you have to make the, um, you have to make the uh, choices sort of given different scenarios. And I think that's, that's fascinating. Um, no, Eliza, will this be recorded? Missed most of the streams so far. Was excited to see how this worked. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is being recorded. This is going to be published to YouTube. Should be up by tomorrow. So youtube.com slash CS50. We have a CS50 live, CS50 on Twitch playlist that you can definitely check the videos out on. Um, and shout out to David for joining in the chat. Thanks, David, for tuning in. Just an idea from the chat, says Zanzaman. Oh, does Zanzaman, did you say something? Uh, Oh, man, there is so much chat. This is amazing. Love it. Really love it. Um, 
The beginning title looks sick, doesn't it? Yeah, we used a uh, we used an ASCII art generator for it. Uh, I thought it was super cool. Um, I had to experiment with it a bit, but uh, there's basically ASCII art generators. You can go on like this is uh, patterjk.com, and they have a you, like there's all these different ones, and you can just copy and paste them after you've um, written in like the text that you wanted to write here. So pretty cool. It adds a little adds a nice little touch of polish to the game. And people want David to uh, provide a suggestion for the chat. David may or may not be present still or may be um, occupied with stuff. But if he is in the chat and he wants to provide a, a suggestion for the adventure, that would be an awesome way to, uh, to carry things on. Oh, Andre's got a suggestion. After Chuck Norris, the stick flies off. This is good because we, we do need to close off the Chuck Norris thread. So let's go over to, um, I think it was up here, the stick. Where is it? New location, tripping with a stick, right? So we'll say trip stick. After Chuck Norris, the stick flies off and hits a forgotten cassette player from the late 1980s. You hear the words, never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna turn around and desert you. And you realize that humanity is really, isn't, is really worthy of keeping peanut butter. Gotcha, okay, so let's do that. So after Chuck Norris, <laughs> after Chuck, um, wait, um, we'll say after Chuck Norris trips on the stick, um, it flies away and hits a forgotten cassette player from the late 1980s. I didn't anticipate a Rick roll in this text adventure, but the fact that we got one in just makes it clear that this is a CS50 related stream. You hear the words, Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna, I, gonna turn around and desert you. Never gonna turn around and desert you. And you realize that humanity really is worth, uh, is worthy of keeping peanut butter. A Rickroll in a text adventure. Who thought? Who would have thought it was possible? Well, we made it happen on stream today. So this is historic. So keep this, keep this in mind for the rest of your life. This was an, a historic event that took place today. Um, this is on Sandcastle, option one. So, right, this is, that, that's this one. So we say print, trip stick, boom. Fantastic stuff. We can rerun it. We can test it. I'm actually not even sure if we're going to have time to get to the other options. The uh, peanut butter jar thread, the human's thread, or the uh, becoming an undercover earthling. There's just so much. This text adventure could just become so large. Um, but it's, it's fun. It's good stuff. So we'll say, um, let's rerun it. And then we're going to attack the humans, um, erase the memories, fly to the location, Go back to build a sand castle, trip Chuck Norris with a stick, and then get Rick rolled. This would be cool to uh, if we had ASCII art of, of uh, Rick Astley right here. That would be that would be something else. I don't know if that ex I'm sure that exists, but um, that that would be pretty pretty next level. Maybe you get beaten by Jack Bruiser because he's having the longest day of his life up for 24 hours straight. That's a long day. Jack Bruiser is that a reference to 24? Jack Bauer. Or is that something else, Jack Bruiser? Can Colden automate the opening of a URL? Um, probably. At the end of that, you also understand that Chuck Norris didn't trip. He hit the stick to trick to Rick, he hit the stick to Rick, to Rick roll you. Yeah, I think the name is Jack Bauer, isn't it? And maybe it's Jack Bruiser, but it's been it's been a long time. I thought it was Jack Bauer. It's Kiefer Sutherland, right? Uh, Richie Bird, is that a is that a uh, Rick roll ASCII art? I'll let the people in the chat look at it. I don't have the chat up on this laptop. Um, but why don't we why don't we spend a couple minutes instead of focusing too much because this <laughs> the attack thread has gotten very large. Let's do the peanut butter jar thread because I feel like that was a very interesting other way of um, sort of taking this adventure, right? So let's have so in the um, attack thing we had the very beginning which was the farm field options. So we'll have peanut butter jar options. So peanut butter jar options. So I'll, I'll write a little bit and then maybe we can have a, 
let's see, did people, do people actually know? We're going to get people in the chat. I want people in the chat to write the prompt for the peanut butter jar thread, the peanut butter jar option, the main option. So somebody write, give me a, a sentence or two to sort of provide the exposition for this sub-thread of the adventure. So this is, remember, the part of the adventure where we're going to do a, uh, where we're going to essentially mutate, transmogrify ourselves into a peanut butter jar. And however that's going to end up letting us complete our mission, we're going to find out. But we'll see how it works. Can you do a post or do a live stream on how to create a website using Python, says Hacker Official? Uh, again, we did a Flask stream in the past with Kareem, so you can check that one out. We don't have any concrete plans in the near future to do a website Python stream, but um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> Nate says it's been two hours already. Yeah, it's been a long, it's been, it's been a, excuse me, a long time, but it's felt like not that much time. That was part of the twist that his name was Jack Bruiser, Adam. That's an excellent twist. You become a peanut jar belonging to a zealous housewife. You slowly make her regard you as God, and she feeds you enough peanut butter for your whole species twice over. Um, <laughs> it's interesting. I would say it's a little bit, uh, it, it gets us a little bit to the point too quickly. We need to start off to have options. So we need to be able to take this in a few directions. We can't just immediately have the, the victory, right? This is, this is one of the main sub-threads, so we need to branch off into a, few other, into a few other threads. You decide to change the human's mind by tasting terrible. OK. So <laughs> in an effort to <laughs> infiltrate planet Earth in the most clandestine way possible, you decide to transform yourself into a sentient peanut butter jar. Um, what do you do from here? So we can say, modify your flavor profile to taste absolutely horrendous. So that would be one option. So taste terrible is going to be equal to one thing. So we need to know we need to know exactly where this takes us, right? A sentient peanut butter jar. Yeah, exactly. We have to know what's going on. We have to we have to take this somewhere. Uh, why is YouTube forty seconds delayed? Uh, I'm not sure, Kanice. I would go on Twitch and see if that's any better. YouTube and Facebook tend to be a bit slower than Twitch. Twitch's latency is really good generally. I understand that for some folks it doesn't uh, encode at a lower frame rate or a lower resolution and can therefore buffer a bit too much. Um, but if you can join on Twitch for something like this, definitely do so because the latency here actually makes sense. Join the circus as the most sentient peanut butter jar in the world. OK. I love it. Join the circus as the most sentient peanut butter jar in the world. I, I couldn't come up with this on my own. This is a narrative that's only possible with the power of uh, sort of the internet helping me, the chat being the proxy for my narrative abilities. Otherwise, this would be, I would not be coming up with ideas like this. I love it, though. This is, a great amount, this is a great time. This is fun. So we have the flavor profile option to taste horrible. And then we have the circus option. So we'll say, we'll call this one join circus. But what happens here? We have to, uh, yeah, there, is a, there should be a win condition. With, there are usually multiple win conditions and multiple loss conditions. That's really, the, that's really the goal. Flavor profile. Um, but as they see, the thing is, we, we can't just make the first one a win, I don't think. I think we need to make our flavor profile bad, and then we need to write some description about it, at least. I mean, we could do that. We could make, our, we could make this a win, actually. Um, but we need, some, we, need some, we need some description. We need, to make this, we need to make this fancy. We need to know why this is a win condition. How does this make the aliens? How do we get all the peanut butter this way? Is it because humans just hate peanut butter after tasting us? Because we're only one alien, we're only one jar. He gets a job at Microsoft. 
Twitch is less stable, but better in latency. It works fine for minutes and then breaks down. Kind of sucks. Ooh, I'm sorry, Kinesis. That sounds bad. As the humans realize this peanut butter has turned. Okay, I like that. As the humans realize this peanut butter has turned, they scramble to create fresh peanut butter. As they do, you learn the recipe to the receipt. <laughs> The recipe to create as uh, much peanut butter as we need. That's a victory. Very nice. Taste terrible is a victory. So cool. So we'll say um, jar options is going to be equal to jar options is going to be equal to int on the input of peanut butter jar options. And then whoops, if jar option is equal to one, which is the tasting terrible option, we will print taste terrible. And we win. So now we can test this. We'll go back to here. And instead of choosing attack the humans, for the first time, we're going to choose uh, become a peanut butter jar. And then we're going to say, in an effort to infiltrate planet Earth in the most clandestine way possible, blah, 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 we're going to modify our flavor, profile, our flavor profile that tastes absolutely horrendous. And then <laughs> we win, therefore. So awesome. Ecological message about renewable energy sponsored by Ted Turner. Uh, I do not get that. I apologize. I, yeah. Flo flies over my head. I apologize. Tried to talk to the jelly jar next to you. Turns out it's a cursed woman and you two fall in love. Why are we assuming that the, why are we assuming the alien is male? It could be, it could be a female alien, right? But we'll, we, get, we, can, we can maybe, I, for the sake of our narrative, we'll assume the alien's male. Um, Zauge, I guess, kind of sounds like a male name in the, in the context of Eastern European names. Um, but we'll do that. We'll, we'll say that. That's, I actually really like that idea. I think that's interesting. So we'll say, uh, look, look at the jelly jar beside you. So we'll say, jelly jar. And then Asley said, you tried to talk to the jelly jar beside you. Turns out that it's a cursed woman, and the two of you fall in love. You decide to abandon your peanut butter mission in the name of love. Beautiful. Beautiful ending. Love it. Zaige is obviously a male name in Aliens. Uh, <laughs> can I ask, how would you handle updating the content of the terminal instead of adding it to, uh, adding to it without using any third party library like end curses? I tried to print like 50 new lines to clear, but the motion looks jaggy. Um, I haven't done this in a long time. Usually people do say use end curses. And I think Python comes with end curses first party. I don't think it's third party anymore, if I'm not mistaken. Python curses? Um, maybe not. Yeah, I think it just comes with curses by default. So you don't have to necessarily feel too bad about using curses. I don't do a lot of text gaming in Python. I would usually use a library. The one time I tried to do a Python roguelike, I used libtcod, which is a roguelike library. And I think they wrapped n curses or curses or something. So I would say maybe use curses since it's first party or Look up like Google smoothly clear terminal Python. Um, and then like browse Stack Overflow, for example, and see they have this. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but people are saying it's using an ASCII escape character, which I'm guessing it probably is a clear command, but I'm not entirely sure. And it looks like there are, like, you can also call the OS clear option as well. Um, oh, Bella, do I have a typo? I apologize. Let's see. Where do I have that? Jelly jar. Try to talk to the jelly bar. The jelly jar beside you. Appreciate that. Um, you create a perfect peanut burger hamburger. The president finds out about these great hamburgers and decides to eat one. He takes one big bite and shouts, what a great hamburger. Little did he know that you are now able to gain control of his body. What do you see there? Is, this, is that the nuclear football? <laughs> so we're going to destroy the earth <laughs> because we... That's, that's fascinating. The, um, 
Well, we'll, we'll do that as option number four. We'll say option number four. Create the ultimate peanut butter hamburger. I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now. I, all of this talking about it, I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now. So we'll say uh, peanut butter burger is equal to this. And then um, we'll do, that's the ultimate peanut butter hamburger. So you create the ultimate peanut, peanut burger hamburger. The president finds out about these great hamburgers and decides to eat one. He takes one big bite, whoops, one big bite and shouts, what, what a great hamburger. Apparently he loses his ability to speak as part of this process. Little did he know that you were now able to gain control of his body. What do you see there? Is that the nuclear football? We'll consider that a loss condition possibly. Um, here we'll say elif jar option is equal to two pass. Elif jar option is equal to three pass. Uh, elif jar option is equal to four pass. And then we'll say uh, print, so we'll say print jelly jar. And then we'll say print, this one is peanut butter burger. So these are, I would say these are both loss conditions. At least they feel like loss conditions. The only one that's kind of up in the air as not a clear loss condition. Oh, I guess, oh, well, this one's a win condition. But the option number two, the circus condition, is, is up in the air. So I think we should follow this thread a little bit and see where the circus should take us. Um, and then probably pretty soon we'll end up, I mean, I think at this point we've kind of covered most of how this works and we've had a, a good amount of time, we've already gone two hours over, um, having the community aspect to this and seeing what a text adventure looks like, how it's implemented in an admittedly crude and naive way. Um, but it's been fun. This is a great experiment, and I had a lot of enjoyment in doing this. I would love to keep doing things like this. I think there are a lot of ways we could end up exploring this idea a little bit more, I guess a little bit more creatively and more dynamically. So we'll see what we can come up with. Um, hamburger is a word from one of the current president's tweets. Oh, I get it. OK, I see. I see. Makes sense. I messed that up. Oh, you're right. The president, I think technically the president does need to be capitalized. You're right. Not that I care that much, I'll be honest. Hexatester, first timer here. Hello, Hexatester. You're here right as we get somewhat close to the ending, but this was an awesome experiment. Basically, what we did is we did a, uh, a interactive text adventure game. And if you want, Hexatester, if you want to provide an idea, so we have basically we're in a situation where we have an alien game, basically, where we're an alien. Our goal is to get all the peanut butter on Earth, or some way of getting as much peanut butter as is on Earth. And um, we have this side thread where we decide to become a peanut butter jar, a sentient peanut butter jar. And so option number two is that we join the circus as the most sentient peanut butter jar in the world. So if you would like to tell us how this thread, where this thread guides us, Hexatester, we can maybe use this to, uh, as one of the last things we use to wrap up. And also, Whipstrake, I do see your suggestion. I'll see if we can maybe find a way to integrate that as well. You end up in a CS50 lecture, end up being in the algorithm demo. You then understand that CS50 is better than any peanut butter. You film the lecture, send it to your overlords, who then use CS to create a new power source. I love that. I love that. Um, where? That could be part of the uh, infiltrate as a human. Yeah, that would be great, actually. So we can maybe have that here, um, which is, if we go to main.py, and then where is it? 
it's um, become an undercover Earthling. So we'll say you decide to go undercover on planet Earth as a human. Where do you decide to go first? And then we have a few options. So Nate's would probably fall under Harvard University as being option number one. And then we would say Harvard option being equal to. And then we say you end up in a CS50 lecture and end up being in the algorithms demo. You then understand that CS50 is better than any peanut butter. You film the lecture and send it to your overlords. By the way, they don't ha you don't have to film the lecture. We have all the lectures on youtube.com slash CS50 if you're paying attention, alien overlords. No need to film. Who then use CS to create a new power source. So I like that. I like the creativity of we've changed direction. We've sort of still won. We've solved a problem, the problem of the power source. But we no longer need peanut butter. We use the power of CS. So pretty beautiful, honestly. So we say here, um, uh, undercover option is going to be equal to the int of the input of uh, Harvard, or of um, rather uh, undercover options. And then we say if undercover option is equal to 1, we will print Harvard option. That's the win condition. And so somebody asked if we could run it. Absolutely. I'm going to clear my terminal and then run it. And this is what the text adventure looks like. <laughs> Aliens intergalactic marvel. And uh, let's become an undercover Earth thing real quick. So you decide to go undercover on planet Earth as a human. Where do you decide to go first? We'll go to Harvard University. You end up in a CS50 lecture and end up being in the algorithms demo. You then understand that CS50 is better than any peanut butter. You film the lecture, send it to your overlords, who then use CS to create a new power source. So beautiful, beautiful suggestion. Um, and then Hexatester didn't provide a <laughs> Princeton would be a loss condition. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. But I think Yale would be the proper loss condition. Um, Maybe we won't go there in this stream, but you know, a more tasteless individual than myself might do something like that. <laughs> uh, we need a, maybe for the last thing that we have, we will go back to our peanut butter jar sort of path and then figure out what happens when we join the circus. Where, where should we go? What's gonna, what are we going to do when we join the circus? Do we have a set of options? Does that lead to a loss, to a victory? We'll close that out. Um, and then Adam Fighter, since you suggested the running thing, why don't you suggest the, the, the path? Um, what happens? You see us to create the matrix, use the humans as batteries. Well played. It says one AOG. Yeah, there we go. That's true. That could, be a, that could be a path as well. This adventure could go on infinitely. Infinitely. Um, but this has been great. This is a lot of fun. A lot of energy today. So much chat. Sorry, lost in the maze. Say that again, I was bashing Yale. Um, Hexatester and Atom Fighter 1. OK, so Hexatester, I want you to give me the, what happens when we join the circus. As the most sentient peanut butter jar in the world, I want you to tell me what happens when we join the circus. What's the, what's the dialogue that comes up? And Atom Fighter, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what should happen as option, what should be option number two going undercover, and what should the result of that option be? So two, I want both of you to give me, give me a suggestion. We'll see, hopefully the latency isn't terrible. This has been an exercise in latency testing more than anything else. But it's been tremendous fun. And we've, we even got to, again, we got to get, we got Rickrolled in a text adventure. Who does that? When does that happen? That never ha I don't think that's ever happened in history. We did it. We made it happen. Does Yale exist? This was possibly the most fun stream so far, says Andre. Oh, awesome, thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Can we do a stream for this for a game with graphics? It would take more than one stream, but it could be so much fun. Um, I would have to think about, if you have ideas on how that could work, that would be interesting to, to find a way to make that happen. But yes, I would love to do more community-driven stuff. 
I need a backstory. I'm a method actor. Um, you're, you're an alien trying to uh, hijack Earth to find all the Earth's peanut butter. It's a choose-your-own-adventure game. We need a... Uh, for Hexatester, Hexatester is doing the, the, the circus, but you're doing the... Uh, you're infiltrating Earth as a human. You're trying to take the form of a human instead of a peanut butter jar. So where do you decide to go as a human undercover as an alien? Is it crunchy or smooth peanut butter? It is all forms of peanut butter. As he says, agree with it being the most fun stream. Well, I'm glad you guys had so much fun. This was great fun for me, too. We, the chat was absolutely popping today. It was like hard to keep track of. Make an app with it using Kivi module. Um, I would have to look into that. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure what that is or if that would be of benefit to this stream. I'm sure that, I'm sure that would help to deploy. I'm sure I'm guessing that's a deployment way of making that work. Uh, so I'm not sure. Maybe that would be good. I'm not familiar with Kivi. I think somebody brought it up in stream one time, and I didn't know what it was. Dude, I'm drawing a blank. OK, that's fine, Adam Fighter. Somebody else, anybody else want to, uh, want to fill in for Adam Fighter for the second option in the human in disguise path? And uh, Hexatester is still waiting on you for the circus path, too. Oh, for mobile, I see. You decide to go to the circus, and you see a sentient peanut butter. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> oh, wow, that's meta. That is fascinating. <laughs> you decide to go to the circus and you see a sentient peanut butter. Wow. <laughs> it's for everything, but yeah, mostly it's for Android, iOS apps without having to recode it for each app. Ah, interesting. Got you. I guess that could be interesting for folks on mobile. Um, we'll call this circus. Hopefully I didn't already create a, uh, oh, that one was called join circus. We'll call this one visit circus. Run into issues with all these global uh, constants potentially causing problems. You decide to go to the mall, says Navelgy. Ah, interesting. You go to a peanut butter factory, logically speaking, says to Chukinese, right, logically. Um, visit the circus, go to the mall, visit a peanut butter factory, logically. Um, we're going to visit the circus. You see a peanut butter jar. You see a sentient peanut butter jar performing circus tricks. What do you do? And then we could create more options here. Getting back at Nick for yesterday's virus got lot. Oh, I'm not supposed to read that. You go to the decide to go to the mall, peanut butter factor factory. So this is good. We could we could keep going with this. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of potential options here. I think I think at this point we've sort of gotten the idea of the of the text adventure. We've had fun. This is like a finite state machine. Yeah, essentially it is. It is a, essentially a finite state machine. And you could refactor this out and modularize it and make it more abstract and make classes that represent a finite state machine um, and write like a, a like sort of have a, a, a domain-specific language for your text adventure. And this is probably what people have done. People, I think, have actually written like XML-style formats for text adventure engines like this that make it easier to quickly come up with content. Um, but this is sort of the flow of how a text adventure game. <laughs> As the peanut butter, you end up in Nick Wong's house, spill on his laptop, avenging Colton Ogden. I love it. I love it. Um, it's 2.30 now. It's been two and a half hours. It's been a good length of a stream. We've covered the gist of how to get Python to work for a simple text adventure. We even introduced ASCII art, and we even had a Rickroll incorporated into our uh, game, which was not what I expected coming in. I should have known. Knowing that this was CS50 Live, that somebody would rickroll me in the text adventure on chat, in the chat. It was a great amount of fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you all for participating in this. I hope to do more community-oriented streams like this, because I think it's very flexible and interesting and engaging. So we'll see what we can do in the future, what we can come up with. If anybody has ideas, definitely let me know. Definitely um, post to um, in the chat or also on Facebook, on YouTube, let me know, on Instagram. Um, 
uh, let me know there or wherever what your ideas are, and we'll consider everything because we want to do what's interesting. Uh, before we end the day, I'm just going to make sure this isn't a Git repo so that if you're curious, you can download it, experiment with it, uh, make your own text adventure with it. It's not definitely not the greatest engineered application of all time. It's a very sort of loose. Um, it's just a bunch of if statements. But this essentially is what a text adventure, it's essentially how a text adventure operates underneath, uh, underneath the hood. So uh, the Facebook is facebook.com slash cs50. You can go to facebook.com slash groups slash cs50. You can also go to youtube.com slash cs50. Any of those are great avenues to get access to our content. Um, if you want, you can add me on Instagram, which is this, which I can't type it. There we go. If you want to try to use Instagram more, I guess. Um, and also CS50 on Instagram, which I believe is just at CS50. So add, add CS50 on Instagram, because that is uh, where you'll see all of the updates for our streams. We post thumbs now on Instagram. We post uh, on Facebook, we post events. On YouTube, we post events. On Twitch, we post it in our schedule at the bottom of the page every week. And so we have a lot, a lot of stuff. You'll get too many pull requests with more adventures. People can, people can definitely pull requests, or they can fork it and do their own thing. Um, I'm going to clear this. I'm going to git init. And then I'm going to remove, is there a DS store in here? I, can't, I don't think I can see it. Um, I'm going to nano a git ignore. And then I'm going to just make sure that I specify DS store should not be included. Right? So this is great. I'm going to git add dot git. Um, I got to actually create the repo on GitHub. So I'll create a new repo. We'll call this um, ba -ba -ba -ba. text adventure stream. So text, so community driven text adventure from stream on Twitch TV, TV. And this will be public. So you can all clone this, pull request it, fork it, do whatever you want with it. It's not the most interesting body of code in the world, but it's, it's been a fun time. Oh, <laughs> Solitaire Part 3 will be coming, Sarul, I promise. I've uh, been meaning to dive back into that and pre-create it and then get uh, updated on it. Um, stream schedule updates. So we, haven't, we have uh, next week on Tuesday, we have a neural network stream with Nick Wong. So the rest of this week, we're not having any streams. Um, there's plenty of other work that needs to get done, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. But next Tuesday, we are, and I have to chat. We, that might get pushed to a different time. But tentatively, next Tuesday, uh, as of just a few minutes ago, we will be having a stream on neural networks with Nick Wong. So yesterday, he and I were chatting. And I was saying ML, and I meant ML the language. And he was saying ML, and he meant machine learning. And so we ended up deciding that he didn't know ML the language. So it wouldn't make sense to have him host an ML stream on the language. So instead, we're going to do a machine learning stream with neural networks where we're going to take prior images of me and Nick on stream. We're going to cluster them using k-means clustering. And then we're going to use a neural net to generate brand new images that are similar to those clusters. And so this is going to be fascinating. I'm actually really curious about this because I've been wanting to learn more about ML and neural nets um, and AI, more generally speaking, and deep learning and all, this, all these fancy terminology. ML, AI, buzzwords going around. But I've been wanting to learn about a lot of the stuff that's getting a lot of traction. So next week, uh, tentatively for Tuesday, may change. Tune in for that stream. It's going to be an awesome stream. Really excited for it. Um, let me go ahead and finish this. Git remote add. Oh, I need to commit, actually. Commit, um, initial commit. Git remote add origin, blah, blah, blah. Git push upstream origin master. And then that should be everything, except for the DS store, which we don't want, because that's just a an annoying file that doesn't belong in our repo. We have a PyCache as well, which probably shouldn't get committed, but oh well. Um, yeah, all together, I think that's all set. The link is uh, github.com slash colponoscopy slash text adventure stream. So if you're curious about the repo, go ahead and go to that link, and then you can download the code and mess with it on your own and do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, this was the text adventure stream in Python. And it was a great amount of fun because I liked how there was this back and forth. Uh, people seem to be into it. 
I, I thought it was really good. Machine learning is roughly equal to general adversarial networks as Hexatester, if that's, if that's how I'm parsing your thing. We will be using um, sort of, well, not a generative adversarial network, but we will be using generative imaging for creating the new images in the, um, in the neural net stream. We could create a, gener a generative adversarial network if we wanted to. I think Nick is familiar with that, and I think TensorFlow would let us do that. It's going to be in Python and TensorFlow, by the way. Um, and the other streams are sort of TBD next week. Um, might do that jQuery stream that got postponed from last Friday next Wednesday, and then do another stream next Friday. But uh, we're going to have to wait and see. It might not be up until, uh, well, tomorrow, Wednesday's stream is going to be up later today. Next Friday's stream is going to be up this Friday. We'll only know pretty much as soon as a week in advance. And that's actually as soon as we can publish it. So we'll see. Next community to run thing, maybe get a co-host or moderator to parse the text faster, do more stuff. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to also back and forth and have the narrator like in my head and knowing where the adventure is going and have it make sense for something that fast paced. It was pretty fast paced. But yeah, um, a moderator or a co-host wouldn't be necessarily a bad idea if we can get it. It would have to be just right. It would have to work just right. I could see it, I could see it failing. Um, and being just kind of like a botched attempt at management. But we'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, Bavik is saying, ignore PyCache. Um, yeah, I forgot to ignore the PyCache, but at this point, it's OK. Um, what is the max? 250 words for what? For the text adventure? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that, there's not a, a, a max words on the, um, on excuse me, on the text adventure. That's just all Python strings. But um, can you check your Discord when you are free, says Whipstreet? Yes, I will check my Discord as soon as I am free. Uh, I promise. Um, do not sell the code of this project, short code, and it's better than good. It's good enough. <laughs> it is good enough. That is, that is correct. That is the truth, nothing but the truth, the whole truth. Uh, yeah. So again, thanks, everybody. If you have more ideas, definitely reach out to us. Reach out to me. Let us know. Uh, we will see you soon so not this week no more streams this week but we'll see you next week for neural networks and beyond so stay tuned for more updates and uh before i leave i'm just going to shout out all the followers that kindly follow during the stream i missed most of them because it was so in tune with the uh, with what was going on uh nintendo 33 grim waltzman shm 746 and duke wima b899 bachega Kip Vanderzee, Lucas Nothing, Triste, and Dimson CSKA. And if I'm missing any other ones, I apologize. But thank all of you very much for following. This was CS50 Live with a live text adventure in Python. Enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. And we'll see you next time. Stay safe.